welcome to the closing night for our July summer trading card auction. I'm Mike Provenzale, the production manager in the Heritage Sports Department, and the man on my right, separated like Hannibal Lecter by a plastic screen right here, is the most dangerous yet most entertaining man in the hobby, Mr. Tony Geezy. Tony, how are you doing Boy, tonight? it's been way too long since we've had one of these. It's it great has. to see you again, Mike. You look good. You look good. What's That's the secret? That's just the clear plastic. Ah, <laughs> there you go. There it you gives go. me that Barbara Walter sheen that uh, <laughs> I really need. And everyone at home, you can't see that, but I'm sure you would appreciate it if you could. It's a very exciting night for us. Tony's prepared. I have he's my got, essentials. He's also got gummy lifesavers as well. Um, that's the fuel this man runs on. To no surprise, its diet is mostly sugar. 90% sugar? Is that what we're thinking, Tony? I'd put it right up there. Yeah, I, I have to agree with Mix you. in a Mountain Dew and some beef jerky, beef jerky from time to time. But a very exciting night. The culmination of many months of work putting together the finest card auction available right now. Over 2,000 lots of singles, sets, unopened wax from all eras, from 1875 to 2020 this year, Tony. That is a broad spectrum. It is. I mean, this, and just like you said, there's everything. There's vintage, of course. We always have a great selection of vintage and the new stuff, the stuff that has just been on fire lately. Um, a nice sampling, um, the unopened has performed well, as, as it always has done the last, you know, five to seven years. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting and it's, it's fun. We always mention this, how much, how fun it is to watch the bid board, to see everything come in. There's always things that will surprise us. Uh, there's things that go for multiple That's the fun times. Of it. Yeah, it is, and it keeps us coming back every single day. So some of you might be watching on the recent bid screen at HA.com. Some of you might be watching on our Facebook page, which is at HA Sports. Some of you might be watching on YouTube. I'm guessing that's the millennials in the group. <laughs> um, but if you have any questions, comments, you can put them on our Facebook page right under the feed, and we would be glad to answer them about anything in the auction, anything you may have. You want to know Tony's eating habits? We'll let you know. Uh, if you want to bring us something, I mean, we we do have we a new office this year. Accepting gifts, we are. Great mention yeah, there, absolutely. Tony. We are at our Dynamite new drop campus, uh, in a secret location in Dallas that you can only find by googling Heritage Auctions on the <laughs> internet. But a beautiful new building. Everybody, every part of Heritage is all here together in one location on one floor. No more elevators, Tony. We're yeah. done with it. That technology is gone. And uh, we, but we are stashed away in a secluded part of the building. I hadn't even seen until today. No, I mean, we are literally from one end of the building to the other, to the opposite side of the building. I'm a little tired right now. I, I got all my steps in today, so I'm, I'm really happy with that. To I find got... marketing, we had to decipher a series of clues, each more devious than the one before it. <laughs> but we managed to do it right before starting time, which is right now. So all night, we're going to stay with you. We're going to be talking about cards in the auction, answering your questions. Uh, we've got some highlights we want to talk about that we've got set aside right here. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. We're going to talk about items that are moving up the bid board on the recent bid activity screen where you can also see us. Hello to those people watching there. And uh, we're just going to enjoy the night, Tony. Enjoy each other's company, but through a plastic glass shield. All right, we've already got some comments. We do. In. All right. Chris Allman Road. Hi, buds. He is a former Heritage employee, one of my favorite employees. Thank you for watching, Chris. We miss you. Uh, we miss the security his sidearm provided. He was one of those guys that when he was in your presence, you kind of made sure, you know, everything was tucked in and your badge wasn't showing any of that kind of stuff. He was hardcore. And uh, I think one time I did see him with his badge where it shouldn't, you know, he, his badge was hanging out and I, was, I, I, I had to say something to him because, you know, he did a fantastic job. And the one thing that I never realized was how much security is a part of our job here. Absolutely. And Almost a billion dollar company here, mm -hmm. do nearly a billion in sales heritage wide. And uh, 
Chris Almanor was the head of security, and he would be quick to roundhouse kick you in the face if yeah. you stepped yeah. out of line. I never messed with the guy because I, I would, like I said, you would get a little nervous around <laughs> him. Like you didn't, you know, like, he was waiting for you to mess up or something. He's already on your case, Tony. He yeah. says tie and no tie. What happened? Chris, next time I'll have one. I promise. There is not a tie in existence that can contain that <laughs> neck over there. So uh, I challenge you to find one. I'll, dig, I'll have to dig through the archives on that. Brian Wood fun. says, I need 90s piece pack gear. That's I do too. <laughs> I do too. See, <laughs> Brian Wood and I collect the same exact here. thing. And um, he is a... A great collector and a friend, and kind of met him through collecting. And uh, yeah, we have the very same interests. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Thank you to everyone for watching. We'd love to hear from you. And save uh, me a couple items, Brian. Don't don't get everything. Vince Leslie says one of my favorite auction houses. He probably means his favorite auction house. <laughs> He's watching the T206 Ty Cobb Ooze It Back. That is a great one. We'll definitely talk about that very rare back on the iconic T206 Cobb card. It's closing tonight. Extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central Time, so just under two hours. We'll keep you all appraised of the uh, bid board and the time left. That's Tony's department. He's the time master. I think he also mentioned something about the National. And, yeah. it, and I don't want to bring everybody down, but uh, this would have been the National. I had it on my, I got the old school date book. And I had it written down national for, I think, Wednesday morning. And we would be at the national right now, meeting all of our clients, taking in consignments. And it, it, it's it's too bad that we're not there. Yes. But this is the next We best. miss you guys. We yeah, miss we you guys. Do. But we are still in touch. You can call. You can email. Um, we got another comment from, ooh, our marketing. Robert Wolanski says, straighten your tie. I guess he's talking to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shoot. Straighten that out there. But uh, I can help you if you need help. We'll find ways to connect you. We are still doing <laughs> home visits. If you'd like us to come visit your collection, we're social distancing. We're masked. Tony puts on an entire hazmat suit. I have uh, visited Packers a couple Green. clients, and yes, the mask, gloves, sanitizer. You know, we even check with our clients. Do you want us to wear something? Even when somebody comes in here, everybody's protected. We take temperatures and all that. So, you know, we've been doing a good job of that. And yeah. And a lot of people out there in the hobby without shows are struggling to sell their material, get appraisals, and we'll do all that online or we will come out and visit you. You can contact Tony at Tony G at HA.com. And I'm Mike P at HA.com. Um, I've got confirmation from Robert Wolanski much better. He oh, okay. Says, uh, I was Tony getting a little worried. Tony Thanks, tied, Robert. Tony tied my tie. Hi. So. Sorry. Sorry. And Russell Crowell says, hey, Tony, nobody ever says hi to me. They just tell me my <laughs> fashion faux pas. I hope we can get back up to Toronto soon. Absolutely. I love doing that show. It's May. It's November. It is one of the best shows um, that we do. And it just shows the passion of the hockey collectors. Uh, Upper decks there. Um, all very the polite, companies. I hear. Very polite. Oh, very polite. And I had poutine Not for stereotype. the first time. Oh, man. Poutine. I would love to watch Tony eat some yeah. poutine. Yeah, it was Maybe good. Maybe for the next show. We'll yeah. break that out. I'll definitely take photos. <laughs> definitely take watching photos. Watching Tony eat is kind of like watching a National, National Geographic video. Um, it's gruesome, but you can't look away. <laughs> You've got away with words, Mike. Thank you. You Thank have you such a way with words. Um, oh, he says bring pro with you. Absolutely. Oh! I've never been to Canada. I would love to go to Canada. You would love it. Go to the one in May. It's much nicer, of course, weather-wise. You go to the one in November, and it can get really cold. No, that's what I want. I want November, Toronto, where I live in Texas, so I want to You want to experience up. the... Yeah, that's how you feel life right there is the <laughs> frost in your face. Um, Looking forward to it. If you'd love us to visit you, we'd love to visit you as well. Reach out to us. Uh, Who's going to cook? Can you cook? or oh, I can cook. All right. All right. Come on now. Mamma mia. Pro Don't worry, I'll take care of that. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now we're good to go. Uh, Chris Cedar Estright. Hey, Tony Geezy. Everybody loves Tony. Uh, you know, they. I met her at the show. shout outs in. Gr they, they, they do the show circuit. They're from Ohio. And... Um, just a wonderful family. They do all the shows, and that, I met her at the Strongsville show. Her, oh, great show. Her great husband and her son. Her son, great, great kid. I feel bad because he's in high school and he's had to miss some of his sports. And um, you know, we we keep up with it on on Facebook. But uh, yeah, just great collectors. And you know, the one thing that that this has really taught us at Heritage is 
you know, to almost think outside the box, to, to figure out different ways to get consignments. It's been, um, you know, we're lucky because we have a lot of people sending stuff in, but, you know, we've we got been, a lot of resources. We're yeah, we do. Lucky. We do. Yeah. And so. uh, we'll reach out to you. We've got email, phone, of course. We'll do a WebEx or a Zoom call, Teams, if you want to uh, FaceTime with us. Absolutely. I don't know if you want to see us, though. We are wrong. technologically savvy, but we have experts behind yes. the scenes that do all that and explain it to us. Every time I, our IT guys, they ever, I have so many questions and this and that because I said, you guys are so lucky because you have a, a dope like me. <laughs> that you're always going to have job security because I have, you know, I just can't figure this stuff out, thank God. So they'll, they'll, they'll always I have mean, jobs. I mean, as there. he stated earlier, he has a hand planner that he writes yes. in. Yes. Although he does have a phone which has the exact same thing in it. Uh, I write myself emails to remind myself to, to do things. To write things into yes. his hand planner. Yes. Yeah, you still have the old Rolodex, too? I don't have the Rolodex, no. Tony needs a Rolodex. I if anybody out there has one, one, I guarantee you he'd use it. Definitely. Send it in. Uh, just put your name and contact information in there, and he'll start it from there. <laughs> all right, Tony. Before we get started talking about cards, we're all excited. Uh, it's been a while. We're back on TV. Not really TV, the internet. But uh, let's tell you everything that's going on. So tonight we have session one closing of the card auction, which is the premier pieces. Tomorrow is session two. Same situation, extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central. More great material in there. Um, if you can't find what you like in session one, you're definitely gonna find it in session two. If you get beat out for items in session one, goes over what you were looking to bid, go ahead and move over to session two. You're gonna find what you like there. So that's the card auction that's tonight. We've got the David Hall T206 auction, which is closing soon. That is some unbelievable T206 items from the master of collecting, Mr. David Hall. That's Who was at the National up. last year he at was. our booth, kind of talking, collecting, and uh, yeah, it was neat to, to get to meet him. And he put together a T206, how to collect a T206 booklet, straight from his brain into your hands. If you would like one of those, please message us. We would be happy to get it out to you. It's everything you need to know. All of his knowledge about T206 distilled into a handy booklet. And we have an online version, which we can uh, supply the link for as well. So tomorrow, we're finishing up our Platinum Auction catalog. So that's not done yet. Is gonna yeah. Thanks to you, Tony. <laughs> slowing things down. Uh, too much snacking, buddy. Too many of these gummy bears. So that auction is gonna launch tomorrow, and we've had some amazing platinum auctions. I think this might be the yeah. best one we've. You ever know, this one together. is there's a lot of fresh to the hobby stuff that has never been offered before, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, just incredible historic items in this sale. And, yeah, I mean, that that's going to be fun because we've got cards, you got memorabilia, you got everything. And uh, that's going to be a jerseys, record breaker. A lot of photo-matched items, yeah. some great game-worn bats, unbelievable one-of-a-kind autographs. Um, we've got the Jimmy the Greek collection as well. We'll go ahead and let the cat out of the bag on that one. Um, Very interesting uniforms. Yes. There's one. There's a Harold Carmichael. And I want everybody <laughs> to, to check it out. Because it's a game worn jersey with a big rip and repairs, and on the back they took off his name and they put the Greek, and it's just I, I wrote it. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece, and uh, so you a lot can of see the things. preview for that online. The yep. sale's going to launch tomorrow, so look out for that. You'll get an email, I'm sure. You can follow it on our social media. After that, we have the Partner One Collection, an amazing single consigner auction, a collection of baseball cards spanning from 1875 to 2001. Some of the finest examples in there. One person's collection that we are now going to be offering to you. And now we're taking consignments for our November auction, which is cards and memorabilia. Do we get a break? Yeah, no breaks. We don't get a break at all. No breaks. We're going to keep going. Keep going on. So if you have material that you would like presented the way only Heritage can present it, whatever it is, cards, memorabilia, photos, rings, awards, autographs, uh, wax, uh, what am I missing? I don't think you missed anything. Some no. art, sure. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of tickets, stuff coming programs. in right now. There's a lot of stuff coming in right now, and we're you know we're trying to get ahead of the game on that. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, incredible the amount of stuff already for that auction. And it just keeps going and going and going. We don't stop. So we stay busy. We're we an auction stay busy machine. and we're bringing it all to you. And as always, we do free appraisals on anything and everything. Of course, sports, memorabilia, and cards, we do that. But Heritage has over 40 departments. 
as Tony likes to say, I would never say this. Tony says, whatever you collect, there's a nerd for it at Heritage. Hi, dude. So ah, you bring, I'm, a, I'm one of those nerds, though. I challenge you <laughs> yeah. to stump us. Find any item. We have an expert who can tell you the history on it, exactly what it's worth. Great resource for if you are the type of person who trolls the internet looking for things. Estate sales. You find uh, first edition uh, Farewell to Arms. You want to know what it's worth? No problem. We'll tell you on the dot. So try to stump us. First, we'll let Tony try and answer it, and then we'll go to an actual, the actual expert, expert, and we'll see. The one person I would like for us to get on is this Valerie girl who does the video games. Yes. I think we should get her on one of these one of these days or one of these Absolutely. you know shows because I know we we did a little bit in the, you know a couple years Heritage ago. Heritage sells video games. Yeah, yeah. and we just had Vintage, a big unopened one. video games. Yes, and huge I would, in the market right now. And it's amazing the, the 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 young lady who runs that division. You would never guess she would have. The, you know, she's such a young lady, and to have that kind of knowledge <laughs> across the board in video games is just to me is just amazing. And With that video game uh, department, they are getting some amazing results. They are. Kicking myself for opening my Super Mario games. I saw one that was sold for $40,000 the other day. Um, but who are these children, these monsters that got video games and did not open them? I don't them? know. The, I, I'm only I can think of it be I'm toy, toy um, companies or toy stores that went out of business. But I like how they have the, the hang tag and all that stuff on them. And, yes. that, and that's Still part of the grading in process. The that's incredible. So whatever you collect, whatever you want to collect, if you're looking to get into something, we've got a resource. We've got an expert for you. Please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you, even right here, right now. Right we'll, now? We'll get Tony's opinion on it. I don't uh, know if you want that. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. But enough hubbub a lot of ha promotion thank you for staying <laughs> with us through all that there's just a lot going on keep going i want to hear times. more <laughs> it's busy it's heating up in here tony i'm guessing it's about 102 degrees uh so it's when you be see like the sweat, sweat coming then then we'll then yeah. we'll open up the door then it smells like gummy in here right now but it's gonna <laughs> reek of gummy soon once it starts coming out of tony's pores so we'll keep you updated on that of course i know everyone's oh everyone wants to see that pano pano <laughs> All right, uh, so let's talk about some cards, should we, Tony? Absolutely. So we've got extended bidding begins at 8 p.m. Central Time. You have to have your bid in before then to compete. 10 p.m. 10 p.m., sorry, yep. to compete in extended bidding time. So you've got just under an hour and 45 minutes. So let's talk about some of the cards that you could be bidding on tonight. And we're just going to go straight through a history of card collecting right here, Tony, yeah. from the beginning. I like, I like, to the, the, I like the first one you've got here. I mean, that's one of the biggest personalities in baseball history. Yes, this is one of my favorite people in baseball history. This is uh, King Kelly, and this is his 1887 to 90 N172 old judge, the Victorian era version of the monster, right here. And this is uh, King Kelly, ten thousand dollar Kelly as they called him, and this is in an SGC 84 Near Mint 7. Anybody who collects those 19th century cards knows there's a lack of high condition cards. No surprise there. And uh, there aren't too many strong photos. The photos tend to fade, and uh, Kelly's one of my favorites. He was more than a ball player. He was a celebrity. He was an entertainer. He was an ambassador of the game. He really did it all. Um, played was for the Chicago White Stockings. Five pennants over a seven-year span. What was the what, what? What's the song? Slide Kelly. Oh, slide. Mike. Yeah, I'm don't worry. I won't. Don't, ah. usually, usually, we have songs on this show. No songs today. Well, I could People are going to be very disappointed, but uh, I will not <laughs> sing that song. I promised Chris Nerrett I would not sing tonight. I'm giving yeah. him one show with no singing. That's it. And then we're back to songs back to it? next time. All right. All right. I'm going to hold you to that too. So this is one of eleven poses Kelly has in the iconic Old Judge issue. One of my favorite issues. Uh, one of the oldest issues out there. This is the catch hands held high pose. I'm guessing you can guess why it's called <laughs> that. Uh, the aptly titled catch hands held high pose. This is a pop two with only two higher. And SGC's total pop for this is only 60. So an amazing card. One of my favorite things about King Kelly, top notch mustachery on Kelly. There is no doubt about that. And uh, the photo quality on this one is absolutely 
phenomenal. And they had to remind everybody ten thousand dollar kill. Yeah, I well, think that's he, that's just fantastic. He signed that contract, which was a huge hubbub. The most a player was paid at the time in today's dollars, that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow. So, Jeez. if someone signed a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar contract right now, would that make headlines? No. No, it not would not. Quite. Tony makes twice that. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's even talking about Look it. Look at this guy. <laughs> so, a beautiful card. Um, yeah, we think it's going to do about 25000 What's it at right now, Tony? Oh, I'm slipping, folks. It is at twenty three right now, so twenty seven six all in. Uh, it's right at that number. How many people are tracking it? That's always I always say to everybody, that's the big indicator. We have 29 yes. people tracking it. Our 39 left. Um, so that's a good thing to mention about the HA website. When a sale opens, you see something you want. Uh, you don't have to bid right then if you don't want to, or if it's just in the preview, you can track it. It goes to your list. You can check it out later. You can receive notifications about it. So another very interesting one right here. This is the 1887 N175 Type 2, Tony, the rarer two. version, the Type 2 Gypsy Queen John Ward in an SGC 50. I have a dear friend named John Ward. This is one of his favorite cards. <laughs> uh, another great uh, just character from baseball history was John Ward. Um, he excelled as a shortstop and then later a pitcher in his 17-season career. Tony, he threw the second perfect game in history in baseball history. There you go, just, right there. Just, just the education you've, you've, you've and provided. And great player, but more importantly, off the field, <clears throat> he is the one who organized the Players' Brotherhood, which was the first baseball first players' union. union. Wow. And isn't Players' Brotherhood a way better name than the Major League Baseball Players Association? I agree. I agree. They should switch 100%. right back over to that. They've been... You know, open the barrel from the owners, and I think if you switch back to Players Brotherhood, that kind it's of such makes a more it seem incom- such a nice, a little more intimidating. Yeah. You go into those meetings yes. with the owner. We're not just an association. We're a brother. We're brotherhood. I like that. It. You're I like in it. lockstep. So, hope you're listening out there, uh, Mike Trout, players like that who uh, Rob really struggling out there. <laughs> um, but a great card here. Uh, this is one of the rarest 19th century card issues. It's the stylish cousin of the N172 Old Judge. A little bit bigger, uh, but beautiful. There's two varieties. There's the standard size, and then the second version is the Type 2 variety, which this one is, which is near impossible to acquire. But, Tony, somebody's going to acquire it tonight. I love the pose that he's, that he's making Absolutely. on this. Absolutely. Uh, I really do. I mean, it... It's really nice. Yeah, and he's got the stripes on. There's really a lot going for it. I love the action shots. This one, like the old judge, has a lot of action shots in it. Uh, this is one of only two examples in the entire SGC registry right here. And as you said, a beautiful photo. The photo quality is mm-hmm. very good mm-hmm. on here. And uh, as anybody who collects 19th century cards know, uh, it can be in decent condition. It can have... Good centering, nice edges, but often the photos have faded over yeah. time, and uh, not so with this example right here. Not many people have a Gypsy Queen card at all in their collection, and this is one of the finest you could have. And it's at nine thousand dollars right now, uh, so I'm saying that's a steal. Somebody mm-hmm. should get mm-hmm. on that. Immediately. Don't look back, and you know, don't give up the opportunity to get it because you don't get it tonight. Who knows when the next one's going to come around? Eg- Especially in that kind of grade. Exactly. Right? Um, so we're going to keep right on moving, Tony. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Not much time to do it. So we I have. I can talk a, fast. You can talk. F- oh, we're in. Yeah, here we go. So <laughs> micro machines. Remember the micro machine guy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> as an auctioneer, of course, I could talk that fast. <laughs> That's like this. right. I'm I'm right. Zoo bats right here, but nobody really likes that. Although when I tell people I'm an auctioneer. That's the first thing they Everybody answer. Everybody tries talk to talk fast? real fast. And... If you've watched a Heritage auction, you know we do not talk fast. We want you to hear and understand the stories and the history of the items that are being presented. So we have a great run of 1887 N693 Kalamazoo Bats cards. And this is one of, among the first dual player issues in existence. And this one right here is the Sleepy Townsend and Jocko Milligan. 
How about those names, I Tony? Love <laughs> I love the serious face on the batter here. I mean, those, both yes. of those guys, they are not messing around at so, all. So a lot of action shots on these featuring two, two players, a great idea for promotion. This one's in an SGC40, and this is the finer of just two graded examples out there. The Kalamazoo Bats issue um, was produced by the Charles Gross and Company, based in Philly, Tony. They made their name selling tobacco and cigars, and they came up with these premium-sized pro promotions for, as they called, quote, the best cigar in the world for the money. So a little caveat there at the end. <laughs> Tony often tells me I'm the best host in the hobby. Oh, it's not even for the money. For the money. Do we get paid for this? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, How about a bonus maybe? I don't for remember me. getting paid for it. Um, but this is an extremely rare one, of course. Um, currently the highest graded example of only two on both the PSA and SGC census report. <laughs> Very good photo quality. Another great photo on these. Um, nice gloss. This little light surface marring, but a great example. What are you gonna? It's from 1887. Don't nitpick, Tony. Come on. Uh, so that's the Wilbert Robinson, the Hall of Famer. This one right here. Oh yes. Uh, wow. See, so, most of the time he's, he's he's a really tough autograph. You don't I you don't really see him as a player ever. It's usually as a manager. That's right. That's yeah. correct. I was like, wow. That's. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Kind of slipped up on that one, yeah. So I put the wrong card out there. Thanks for uh, pointing that out, pointing that out, Tony. I really appreciate no, it. No, I was just looking at Fred Mann, and I'm like, wait a second. All right, That's all right. Robinson. So here we go. Yes, that is the Wilpert Robinson card right there. I'm going to keep right on moving. Hall of Famer, who's a that. very, very, very tough autograph, by the way, too. Oh, of course. Very so here is the town, Jocko Townsend and Milligan card. There we go. I said I could host the show and put the cards you out. You got it. You I got may, it. You're doing a heck be, of a good job, young I man. I may be failing at that. No, I may be failing no. at that. Uh, just a reminder to anybody, if you have any questions, comments, please go ahead and throw them in. Uh, maybe don't comment on how I just made that error right there. No need to talk about that at all. It's a long game, Mike. That's it's true. It's a long game. That's true. And I'm in it for the long haul. Yes. So I'm going to move right along, and this Kalamazoo Bats is a team card here, which is a great addition to the issue. This is the uh, Baltimore Orioles. All those Hall of Famers. Been around a while, haven't they? Jeez. This is SGC 50, a beautiful card. Um, the lineup on here has, you know I love colorful names oh, from I know. vintage baseball. We've got Oyster Burns, Jumbo Davis, Blondie Purcell, and <laughs> my favorite, Phenomenal Smith. Uh, I believe Phenomenal Smith won about a dozen games in his career, so I believe that moniker came before he made it to the major leagues. But a great one right there, Phenomenal Smith, who later would discover a young Christy Mathewson when he was a scout. Really? How about that? I did not. Everybody looks so serious on these photos, too. Yeah. You know, you're not really smiling. You're, you're... Well, that was common at the time. Photography was rare, so it wasn't now where everybody's... I mean, Tony is constantly taking selfies. Just constantly <laughs> checking out his grin. How, is there something in his teeth? But back then, you know, maybe you'd take a few images a year, if that. So... It's a very solemn occasion, and of course, you know, when you're taking a team photo, you do the serious ones, you have and then to. everybody's yeah. like, do a goofy one. Yeah, at the yep. end. exactly. But you didn't do that back then. Sure. They didn't have the goofy ones. Uh, <laughs> you had the serious ones, though. Yes. So <laughs> this team finished 77 and 58, third in the AA, and uh, they lived or die in the arms of their uh, pitchers. And. Uh, this is one of only six examples of this card graded by SGC. So not many people have it in their collection. Uh, two have, are at this grade, and they rank as the highest graded examples. Everybody wants that phrase on anything they collect. Yep, the, the best note. of the best. A um, little corner wear, but uh, the central image is just beautiful. Great glossy surface. There's no dirt or scratches on it. And the photo quality is excellent on this, which is great on a team card. So you can really get a good look at everybody in there. Um, and a fine example from a series few hobbyists that can say they have in their collection. Tony, do you have 21, one of these? 21,000. 21,000 wow. right there. I do not have one. <laughs> I've not seen one. That's 
the first one I've ever seen. One of the best things about working at Heritage is that uh, we see things all the time that we've never seen before, and a That's lot of true. people haven't had a chance to see. Um, here's another great team one. This is still the 1887 in 9... 693 Kalamazoo Bats. This is another team one, the Detroit Wolverines. Some pretty good star power on that one. Yeah. Uh, so this one's in an SGC Fair, SGC 20 Fair 1.5. It's one of only four graded examples here. And uh, as you said, a great squad. You're going to read off all those Hall of Yeah, I mean, the on ones there? that come, Dan Brothers, um, Sam Thompson, Ned Hanlon. To name a few, Jack Rowe, Deacon Smith. Yeah, just uh, just some of the some of baseball's early stars. Some of the guys who helped make the game what it is today. Uh, wow. The star of this team, though, I have to note him. Uh, he's a great pitcher. He was twenty nine and thirteen this year. Pretzels Getzian. <laughs> Beat that, Tony. How I come can't. there's nobody named Pretzels? Anymore I wish in baseball? there was. Bring it back. Bring it back. Um, so a great club, as you said, they were 79 and 45, uh, led by Pretzels, who uh, had a 29 and 13 win loss record. And the best nickname of all time. <laughs> yeah. So one of only four examples graded by SGC. Uh, this is the only one in fair. There's some corner wear, uh, but the central image again. That's what I was picking out. The ones that have a great clear image, and this one is right in there. Photo quality, excellent. Uh, and this is. An early piece from Detroit's love affair with baseball. That's where it started right there. It continues today. And uh, Wolverine's a great team nickname. It's in college, but not in the professional ranks. Just saying, Daniel Snyder. Maybe, uh, <laughs> they're still looking, aren't they? They're still looking. All right. They're the Washington professional team now. Is that what they're calling them? What are they? Yes, it's, uh, the Washington football team, football team. Which, you know, a lot of people are making fun of that, but it's accurate. It's very accurate. Uh, it may not be flashy, but uh, it tells you what's going on. Uh, and, you know, as a Cowboy fan, I really hope they come up with a great name. Yeah. Why don't you hold this one for sure. me there, Tony? It's a big one. Should I do uh, like uh, and an important Bob one. Barker on The Price is Right? Yes, please yes. do. This is the 1902 W600 Sporting Life Cy Young. Great piece here. The W600 Sporting Lifes are a favorite among collectors and you got Cy Young here. Think anybody's going to break that career victory no. record, Tony? I think half would be a nice goal for somebody. Yes. I no, that is it's long gone at this point unless things uh, switch on a dime, but especially if they're playing 60 game seasons. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be 100 years old. <laughs> I love the size of these too. I mean, yes. you know, I, we we've, we've talked about it before just the storage of this kind of thing very difficult to store and my goodness Cy Young looks young in this photo for aptly God's named sake. then yeah huh? exactly um, so yeah the Sporting Life their favorite uh, some of the most striking premiums ever offered hard to come by great Carl Horner portrait yeah. right yeah. here um, so beautifully rendered of course and this one is just mesmerizing without a flaw in an SGC seventy. Um, beautiful example. Our estimate's twenty-five thousand. It's a twenty thousand right now, um, and I think that's going to do some moving in the next. Oh, hour we're in twenty-six so. minutes. Yes, thank you for the thirty-nine the people tracking this beautiful Cy Young. And that's piece. one where there's definitely a lot of bidders on it, but it's just such a rare piece and so beautiful. People yeah. track it just to keep an eye on it. I want to see. Maybe you can't afford it, but you want to see. You want to see what it goes for. Yeah, exactly. I can. Uh, yeah, enjoy it, Tony. We we only get <laughs> no. it for a little bit longer. And, and I just love how a few hours somebody else is gonna someone own else this. is going to own that. No, it, and, it, and it displays so well too. You know, you can have cards, you can have some of the bigger pieces like that, and then you've got uniforms. So something like that will look you know, great that, in a, in a that's display. one that you could frame. You know. Yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, the card you could frame. Because you have it in a display. nice sturdy slab, and you could. Yeah, you're right on that. I agree. I love it when Tony says I'm right. It's very rare. Oh, yeah. But uh, this is one of my favorite cards in the hobby right here. We've been lucky to see quite a few of them. Um, the Hindu back. Pete yes. Caldon will be going nuts. This is the 1909 T206 Christy Matthewson. This is the portrait. I love the coloring on this one. Uh, one of my favorites from the monster right there. And as you said, it has the ultra, rat, ultra rare. Hindu brown back, um, which 
since we've been selling the David Hall T206 collection, I have learned a lot about T206. Of all different backs. Sure. You can never learn everything. Even he who knows more than anyone else would say he doesn't know everything. Sure. But there's sure. always more to learn. Really interesting subset of collecting it is the advertising backs. And the PSA and SGC censuses now account for that in the population reports, um, what the backs are. So if you're like me and you want to dive even further into it, get your feet wet. You can, you can go all the way in. This one's at SGC 6.5. There's only 11 confirmed examples with this back in an SGC holder, and this is the highest graded one right here. The front is beautiful. It is. You know, with, that's one with, of the, with the shades of yellow and orange. The T206, yeah. of course, a favorite among collectors, one of the three most iconic sets. Mm -hmm. um, but this is one of my favorites out of it. Um, slight corner wear on this, but a remarkable card. Uh, and it would be the crowning touch of any T206 collection right here. It's perfectly centered. The what? The crowning? <coughs> oh, my goodness. Mike. That's right. Uh, bright white border <coughs> and those... Uh, fully saturated colors that we were talking about. Uh, another one estimated at 25,000. It's at 13.5 right now. The T206 collectors are very savvy. Yes. Uh, you don't start collecting T206 on a whim and not know what you're very doing. Very dedicated, always looking to upgrade, always looking to find those, those tough backs. And, so uh, those guys are going to be waiting until the last yep, minute. They're yep. going to gamesmanship. A lot of respect for those T206 collectors. They got a good night's sleep last night because <laughs> exactly. today is going to be... Gonna, uh, they're going to be up late. Yep. Um, Probably so swearing no at their computer there. once said, if they get outbid. And <laughs> but big respect to the T206 collectors. Yeah. That is quite an endeavor uh, for certain. All right, we're going to move on. Another cool subset here. Tony, are you familiar with the E92 Crofts Candy? Let me see. Take a look right there before I show it to the people. <sighs> Not much. Yes, Enlighten so me. This has one of the coolest advertising backs while we were talking about it. It's very dramatic. Um, this one, of course, is Ty Cobb in a PSA 6. One of my favorite baseball quotes is from Ty Cobb, where he said, a ball bat is a wondrous weapon. And that is just a funny quote coming from a man known for... For being a serious... Waging war yeah. on the diamond. And uh, here he's leaning on that weapon. Um, so it's the E92 Crofts Candy is a very scarce issue. Um, it features four different brands for E92, and Crofts Candy is the rarest of them. There are almost six times as many cards from the Dockman and Son series as the Crofts Candy in the PSA census. 1,500 for Dockman and Sons, 1,500 plus, only 255 for Crofts Candy. So super rare issue. Um, each brand, just one graded nine, and those are the only E92 cards known. There are none in mint in the SGC census. Wow. So this one is and you've got Ty Cobb, top no one, highest PSA grade. They've only got 255 graded. We've got the legend Ty Cobb, the highest graded. Take a look at that back, Tony. Isn't that cool? Uh, Allen, Allen, Croft Allen, and Allen and Company. Oh, Allen Company. Croft's candy right there. That's some dramatic. Our marketing department would love that. Yes, uh, yes. They are the best in the business. And again, the front is so beautiful with that yellow. It really yes. jumps out. It really jumps, jumps out. out. Uh, of course, you know, in that era, there's a lot of competition, and uh, you wanted to make your promotion stand out, and you're not going to do that with grays and browns. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, you see mm -hmm. a lot you of want, colors. You want some excitement. But most do not shine the way this one shines right here. A great eye appeal, very pleasing color, and um, perfect card almost, I would say. Total population is just eight. This is the highest example right here. And as you said before, when you can say the best of the best, that the brings best out of the betters. best from a legend right there. So here's an interesting bid we just got in. Yeah, let's hear it. 1985 Topps Garbage Pail Kids Series One Wax Pack. <laughs> Thirteen thousand five hundred right now. Woo. That market, the non-sports stuff, has really, really gone up. And uh, Garbage Pail Kids, my mom wouldn't let. She wouldn't buy them for me. 
But oh, Miss Geezy. I'm sorry. I'm Tell sorry. you what, Miss Geezy, buy him that unopened wax pack. Right there. <laughs> that, that will make up for it. What'd you say the next bid? Then I'll is? hold it for five months and sell it, and then I'll make some. <laughs> What's money. the next bid for it? You said it's uh, over thirteen. Literally, could be like about fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. What's that? Look at this guy. Look how adorable he is. He still got that hazy. Oh, that's the screen. That's right. <laughs> I forgot. Um, so I've got nice. another Crofts candy here. This is Joe Tinker. This is. You're bringing out the big. You're bringing out the uh, big names, aren't you? PSA Mint 9 Tinker. We said there's Jesus. 255 of these cards graded by PSA. None by SGC. This one's a Mint 9. This is one of only two PSA Mints for the E92. This is an item for the experience collector. Somebody who's looking for something to brag about. Nobody's got this. Very few have any of these cards. Crofts candy, and this is one of the finest you're ever going to see. And Joe Tinker, I mean, what more can you say? Um, a favorite among yeah, collectors, yeah. Uh, especially in Chicago. And a Hall of Famer. You and know, when famer. you can add that name, Hall of, or add that Hall of Fame to your name, that that is always going to bring out extra people, and that's going to, of course, raise the value. And yeah, I mean, a mint nine, that's incredible. Total population of only 10. This is the highest graded Tinker and Croft candy card. Say that stunning, ten times, folks. Stunning <laughs> representation here. Bold colors, bright borders. I mean, it's perfect. There isn't a finer one out there. You don't yeah. need to say any more. So this one's definitely going to see some more traffic. We'll keep an eye on that on the bid board tonight. Right now, it's at 3,800. So room to move still, for mm -hmm. sure. And, of course, we couldn't talk about the Croft Candy collection that we have. We've got quite a few, so if you haven't ever heard of them and you want to start collecting them, bam, jump in. The water is warm. This is <laughs> lot 55173, Tony. What do we got? This is the Croft Candy Cy Young. PSA Near Mint 7, Pop 1, none higher right there. Another oh, beautiful cool. one. <clears throat> This is the alone example in Near Mint with none higher from a total pop of just seven in PSA. So this is ultra rare stuff. Um, of course, we love to bring out the highlights for the show. You guys want to hear us talk about stuff you've never seen, you've never heard of. So here it is. This is a great example. Uh, one of the finest examples on record for PSA for the entire series right here. And you've got Cy Young. We talked about him earlier. Surely one of the greatest legends in baseball history. And always with you know having the award in his name, it brings up his name all the Every time. Year we you know talk who's going to win the Cy Young? Who's your early favorite for the Cy Young? Oh, right it's now, too Tony. soon. It's too <laughs> soon. I've watched a couple Brewer games, and that's about it. I'm just happy that there's sports. I'm happy that there's baseball and basketball tonight and tomorrow. I know. Now I'm, we have to compete with the NBA. If we I know. We had the show last night. <laughs> Who schedules these things, Tony? Is that I'm just glad we have we have something to look forward to now. That's true. Rather than doom and gloom and you know, doom and gloom. Come on, Tony. That doesn't sound sorry, like you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we're back. So we've got plenty more, Tony. But we're gonna take a quick break. Okay. Yeah, we have commercial breaks. We talked about earlier. Um, Heritage has over forty departments. And we're going to highlight some of them. But first, if you're sitting out there thinking, I want these two goofballs talking about my consignments during a live show on Facebook, <laughs> YouTube, and on their own website, how do I go about doing that? There's many ways. And we've distilled it down to one very entertaining video. And I want you guys to look out for the Tony Geezy cameo in this. Enjoy. What is it? I want to watch it. <laughs> As the number one sports collectibles auctioneer in the world, Heritage Auctions has offered many of the most iconic pieces of sports memorabilia to ever be auctioned. Collectors choose Heritage time and time again because of a simple formula for success. Heritage presents the finest collectibles on earth to the widest possible audience. Jackie Robinson's 1947 game-worn jersey, the year he broke the color barrier. Muhammad Ali's fight-worn gloves from the 1965 famous Phantom Punch Bout with Sonny Liston. The iconic 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle card, graded Mint 9 by PSA. Mike Arruzzioni's game-worn jersey from the 1980 Miracle on Ice. But it's not just the incredible items from the history of sports that make Heritage number one. 
It's also the people at Heritage who are dedicated to a hassle-free experience for the collector who has decided to sell. Holding Michael Ruzioni's hockey stick, the very stick that he used to score the game-winning goal against the Soviet Union and the Miracle on Ice, it's, uh, it's, it's indescribable. It's, it's really, a, uh, it's why I do this. It's why I love this. These world record results are made possible by our superior marketing resources. With more than 1 million online bidders from 219 countries, every consigner has access to a tremendous global audience. Heritage reaches this audience by spending more than $20 million annually to promote our auctions. These campaigns utilize global advertising, social media, and publicity to attract the widest possible audience for your consignment. In fact, we often find that our world record prices are paid by new collectors who learned of our auctions through national or international press outside of the entrenched hobby. So why should you choose Heritage? More than 45,000 consigners have chosen Heritage to sell their treasures, and they return to do business again and again. In part because each and every one has received a settlement check in full and on time. From such storied collections as those from Lou Gehrig, Stan Musial, James Naismith, Jim Thorpe, Jerry Kramer, Mike Arruzioni, and Brooks Robinson. With more than $150 million in assets, Heritage provides unquestioned financial stability and flexibility to offer generous cash advances to consigners at any time. From consignment to settlement, we strive to make your experience a pleasant and profitable one. When the time comes for you to sell one piece or your entire collection, the choice is clear. Heritage Auctions. Go to ha.com slash consign for more information or call us at 1-877-HERITAGE. That's 877-437-4824 to arrange your private confidential consultation. you need to know to consign right there ladies and gentlemen That's it's it. that simple uh tony will take consignments from an eight-year-old it would seem <laughs> if you watch that closely enough and a rob rosen grin in there i'd never seen that before that's, that's the rare variation yeah that's the rare variation i love you rob you know i love you i would say i would grade his grin uh maybe a one or two ooh, ooh. affair let's I say i was gonna go a little higher than that a lot but... of effort though he put forth a lot of effort in there um but yes, of course, reach out to us. We do free appraisals. We can find out what your item is worth. If you're interested in selling it, of course, we'll sell it for the top dollar. Absolutely. And get it graded. It, it do on all this the show. Yeah, absolutely. We do. It's yep. one stop. You give it to us. We'll take care of the grading. We take care of the authentication, the promotion. Our marketing department is bigger than the entire staff of our all of our competition. Did you know that, Tony? I didn't know that, but I, I do believe that. And because they're better. Not maybe better looking, but better than the promotion teams for our competition. Man. I'll say that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we are in the marketing department we right are. now. So we harsh are. Harsh stares. <laughs> These people can't take a joke. These artists. <laughs> anyway, we've got uh, an hour and 15 minutes left until extended bidding begins. Tony, what are you looking at on the big bid board right I'm now? I'm looking at this one brings back memories of syndication. 1971 Tops Brady Bunch Meet Jan Brady. That would be her rookie card. 250. <laughs> and it's got the wood borders like the 55 Bowman and the Ace and at 62 Tops. And uh, yeah, the Jan Brady rookie card. Uh, not as popular nine? as the Marsha. No. Oh, Certainly wow. Not. He yeah. went there, didn't he? Yeah, I did. Um, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> but with those brown borders like that, tough to find them in hard and, and uh, high grade because, again, they would uh, chip easily. And, uh, yeah, this is a really nice one. Uh, pop one, none higher. So. And if you love non-sports cards, we've got a great collection. We've got a whole set of the Brady Bunch being sold individually as, long, as, well, as well an unopened box. Really? Of it, yes. A wow. lot of great, and we've got Star Wars, an open box, Series 1, a couple Series 1, and Series 2. Uh, we have some Marvel cards in there, which... Uh, the Star Wars big, stuff big has really mine. gone up a lot in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, you know, as more get released, and just, you know, there's a lot of people collecting Star Wars stuff, and you just see it rise and rise and rise. Yeah, um... I mean, we had, it just within the last few years, the greatest Star Wars movie of all time, Rogue One, was released. <laughs> Don't at me, people. 
No arguments. You mean solo. <laughs> right. Ooh, the cameraman says solo. That's a hot opinion. We may have to get into that later today. we got to get him on here, I think, pretty soon. I did enjoy solo. I will say that. Um, so let's talk baseball cards, should we, Tony? Aye, right, let's do it. We're going to get to other sports a little bit later. We're working our way through. Right now, we're still in 1909. This is the T204 Ramley, a great series. And one, one of, of the, the most hardest. beautiful sets I've ever seen. Yes. With the, the gold em, em, embossing. Exactly. The gold embossing is its most beautiful feature, but also its Achilles heel, Tony. Uh, lots <laughs> of condition true. problems. And this one is the T204 Ramley Walter Johnson in an SGC82. A beautiful example. Anytime we get a great Ramley, which are very rare, I have to bring it on to talk about. I love these cards. And this is a great example. There is but one equal noted on the SGC census and only three higher than this example right here. A beautiful one uh, that right now is at $19,000. And uh, of course, it's got the Dead Ball Era's premier flamethrower featured right there. A great portrait. And uh, I'm just a big fan of the Ramleys. And yeah, I mean, no, I mean, there's everything going for it. It's just a, it's a beautiful, beautiful set. And, uh, you know, of course, Johnson being one of the best cards in that set and having a high-grade one, this one's got all the bells and whistles you could want. Yes, yeah, someone's going to be very happy when they get that one. It is not going to be me. <laughs> um, but we can always, I would love can to always have I cannot afford a Walter Johnson Ramley. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out right now. He uh, said it. Another very unique card here. This is the 1913 National Game Ty Cobb. This is a PSA Mint 9 wow. pony. Uh, the National Game series was circulated only for a single season and as a box set designed for a tabletop baseball game. So most of these were used, handled. Sure. Um, sure. You know. And Ty Cobb's They put them was... in their spokes of their old timey bikes back then <laughs> with the big wheel on the front and the little wheel on the back. Uh, and, and Ty Cobb wasn't really, uh, you know, he was a guy, probably, people probably crumpled his up and might have, you it would, know. It would get the most usage. He would get if the it was for a game yeah. and you had a Ty Cobb card, you were going to bring him up to bat. Uh, yeah. He's the key entry in the set next to Joe Jackson, of course. Um, it's framed with a symmetrical border and it is brilliant white. And the reverse, I love the back. You see that, Tony? Yeah, I it love that. It looks like a game card. Yeah, it does, 100%. Uh, displays the ornate Deep red logo of the national game. Outstanding quality here. PSA Mint 9. One of 12 graded mint with only three higher. Um, really unique one. Uh, this one's at 1400 an estimate at 3000 So this is one a lot more people can afford than mm -hmm. the uh, T204 Ramley. But a really unique card. And I love that little note that it was from a set or a uh, baseball game. And we've got another question here from Ray Strickland. Another comment directed at, guess who, Mr. Tony Beasy. <laughs> that Christian Yelich jersey is calling your name, Tony. That Christian Yelich jersey is going to be a lot cheaper than what it was last year. He's batting 037 <laughs> right now. And he, if there's anybody in this world that needs a day off, it's so Christian So we Yelich. have the Mendoza line and then the Yelich the, line. The Yelich <laughs> Now, is that where we're going with this? <laughs> I love it. Great call, Mike. Great call. <laughs> don't worry. He's going to pick it up, Tony. He will. You, don't, you don't have to worry. All right, so here, this is the 1916 M1015 Sporting News Walter Johnson. And this is a PSA Near Mint Mint 8. Uh, a great series here. This is the highest graded example from a total population of just six, wow. Tony. So pulling out another rarity here. Uh, Johnson is without a doubt the key name uh, in the series, the uh, M1015 Sporting News. Uh, beautiful example. I just love the pose on it because yes. he's put, you know, he's getting ready to give that sidearm delivery, which nobody could hit. He and, uh, is already threatening people right there. Um, he's they one always of the first sit. five players inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame in 1936. And, and he had such a such player. a he had such an even keel. Um, he wasn't a mean guy. You know, you think of Cobb, you think of Fiery. Ty, um, Walter Johnson was a complete opposite. Stoic. Yeah. Even tempered. Yeah, he uh, never got too mad. You never saw him too high or too low. And uh, I mean, all of the is, heat came out of that pitching arm. Yes, right it did. There. And the sidearm delivery, which was very hard to pick up, especially with the speed that he could throw. Ty Cobb, who you mentioned, said uh, about Johnson, 
was the most threatening sight I ever saw yeah. in a ball field. That is bold praise. And for, and for Ty Cobb to, to speak highly of somebody else like that, yes. very, very rare. He would speak highly of players, but a select few, yes. you know, because yeah. you not only had to be a great player, you had to have the same determination and attitude. And that maintain he has. that edge. We've got an hour and six minutes for people to get their initial bid in. So, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of bids coming in right now, but uh, there still is time to get more bids in. Yes, always time. So, got a nice little run here of 1917 H8018 Boston Store cards. You know much about the Boston Store cards? I remember the Boston Store, but I don't think it's around anymore. So, this Boston Store, based out of Chicago. Bet you didn't yeah. see that coming. I know. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so it got this promotion, the Boston store got its inspiration from another scarce series, uh, the 200 card E135 Collins McCarthy. And both had very regional limited distribution. Uh, so very hard to come by. This is the Harry Heelman example in SGC 86, Pop 1, none higher. Uh, you've got a Hall of Famer here. The only one at this grade with SGC, none higher, and there's a total pop of only five of this card. I wonder how you got them. I, oh, wonder, I got them? They... No, I, I mean, pulled how... it out of our vault. <laughs> I wonder how, how, how kids got them. Did you go Maybe ask the, the cashier you for You bought your trousers, and these came in the back they, pocket. They can't, uh, yeah. You know, this is what we need Pete Calderon for here. Pete would have all the info on that. So but here's the beautiful key stuff. card. Of this Boston store series. This is Shoeless Joe Jackson. Wow. And uh, a great full figure portrait of him in that black, black socks uniform. <laughs> a great look. There are superstars, there are Hall of Famers, and then there's legends. And that's the category he falls into. Uh, full figure of the mythical athlete here. He's got so, that black Betsy in his hands, clutching does. the bat. He made it himself. This is a pop two with none higher. So a really strong example, and the surfaces are free of any blemishes. Any Shoeless Joe card is very hard to come by. And, uh, and there's just not much of him out there. Exactly. You know, we've said it before. You know, his autograph is Im almost impossible. Any Type 1 photos, any cards, there is such a collectability to Shoeless Joe Jackson. And, if, you know, it, it doesn't matter if he ever gets in the Hall of Fame or doesn't get in the Hall of Fame. He's it, not getting the Hall of Fame. I don't think he's going to get in the Hall of Fame, no. It adds so much to him, him not being in the Hall of You're Fame. You're right. You know, if they put him in, there would be a huge celebration that one year. It would be a lot of it. But then he wouldn't have really that That whole aura. It would be, it'd be gone. You're right. You know, looking yeah. at baseball as a whole, I think it adds more having him not in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's and what part would be of the, the mythology. What would make him Hall of Famer now that wasn't 20, 30 years ago? Right. Yeah. You know? Um, so this card estimated at twenty five thousand. It's already at thirty one thousand. That's a beautiful 000. card. Uh, no surprise. Pretty much any Joe Jackson card is going to beat our estimates. Not a reflection on our card catalogers who do a great <laughs> job and do a lot of. Research. We just get such good money for uh, Jackson That's stuff. Very I mean, true. we've had That's some very just true. incredible prices. Here's another, another thing. Great one from the Boston store. This is Casey Stengel, um, which in our last auction we sold a lock of his hair. And a baby photo of Casey Stengel, one of my favorite items that we've ever offered. Uh, so this is a great one here from the earliest era of Stengel's career that lasted over four decades. So a great beginning bookend here of the old professor. Very sharp example. There's none higher. It's pop two, none higher. Uh, another one that should do about three thousand dollars. Let's see what it's at right now. 1400 right 1400 now. and I think that's going to get there. Stingle stuff's popular. Mm -hmm. He isn't featured on too many card issues. No, um, he's not. And most of the stuff that you find of him would be late, late in life when he was yes. managing and then when he was with the, God forbid, when he's with the Mets, <laughs> losing all those games and uh, kind of worn down from the game. But this one, he's a spry... Uh, with a youngster. With Brooklyn right yes, there. Yes, the Robins. And then this is the um, Hans Wagner example oh. from the Boston store issue. This one's a P PSA Excellent 5. Pop 1, none higher. <clears throat> uh, the final uh, card in this challenging issue. And 
Hans, or Honus as we call him, was 43 at the time. This was his final year, and he looks every bit of it in that portrait there. Uh, swinging, it's not a great pose for him. He definitely looks like a 43 No, but that is, that is the pose. I mean, look at his forearms. Yes. I mean, he, this is amazing. This is a photo that I've seen before, type 1, and um, this is... Uh, just it, it just, and that's before there was there was really weight training back then. Yeah, it was um, just all incredible. What you did on your own, a lot of genetics. Like Tony's all natural. No, over here, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing at all. No, I go do cardio all the time, and it's not showing. <laughs> it couldn't have anything to do with those uh, light lightsabers. Here, toss me one of those, Tony, if you would. You gotta catch it. If you catch it, you yeah, get one more. You can't hand it to me. So. Uh, Oh, it's right there. Got it in my hand, though. Almost had a second one going your way, but no. Sorry. No, I don't deserve it. <laughs> wow, that is delicious. What's also delectable? This right here. This is a 1922 <laughs> E121 American Caramel Thai Cobb. PSA Mint 9, Pop 1, None Higher. You're saying that an awful lot. I know. Pop that, 1, well, None Higher. I gotta higher. pull that out. Nobody wants me to pull out the card. You say... It's Pop 67 with yeah. 85 <laughs> higher. Uh, that would be something out of my collection. Yeah. You know, nobody wants that. The royalty of the dead ball era right here. Uh, the E121 series. Uh, his position now, manager here. Can you imagine having Ty Cobb as your manager? Oh, no. I think he was a player's coach. <laughs> no matter what you did, it wasn't going to be enough. I could not imagine him as a coach at all as a manager. Yes, no. he... Uh, Ended a lot of people's careers. I said, just sent them home crying like a rookie Mickey Mantle. And the father was not sending them back. Uh, a great example. Uh, it seems like this card should not exist in such immaculate condition. But, Tony, it does. It's sitting right here on the table, and somebody's going to win it tonight. Um, yeah, beautiful example. PSA has reviewed 2,200 cards from this issue with 11 grading mint. So yeah, in the whole gorgeous, series, gorgeous it's hard to find one in mint. And as we said, pop one, none higher of Ty Cobb. Because centering was so hard on those things back then, and preserving was so hard to do, and most of them got thrown away probably. And, um, you know, so there's not many that... The centering on this one is very nice, but that border is spotless, Tony. I'm telling you. I believe you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. And don't worry, I am I am gonna I am gonna go over a card or two in this. Yeah, I promise. We're, we're I'm coming up. Don't I'm worry. We backloaded the entertaining guy. <laughs> so this is uh, that was the batting pose from the E121 of Cobb. This is the throwing. Also PSA Mint Nine Pop One None Higher. So both poses of Cobb from this series in a PSA Mint. You can get them both in. You, you can you can get them both in one night. You don't have to even. Yes. You, and the you don't have to worry about E121 it. E121 had a very thin stock, which was. Common for the time um, in this era, there was a lot of, uh, shall we say, shoddily produced promotions, sure. just getting them out. Cheap uh, as possible. Baseball was yep. really exploding at the time, and not a lot of thought was put towards how long these are going to last, mm -hmm. and especially with the E-121 issue, and this is the exception right here in a Mint 9. Beautiful card. Tony, I'm trying to rock it through here so we can get to your stuff. Uh, this is a very interesting one. One of those we talked about earlier, never seen it before, had never seen this before either. Tony, had you seen this before? Didn't we have a, we, is that the one we had signed that one signed? time? Signed? Didn't we have a signed Cobb and Ruth at one time, a couple, about a year ago? A photo of yeah. this card? It's possible. Why don't you find that out? If only there was some magic oh, box that sitting internet. on your desk over there that could tell you. This is the 1928 Tabacalero. La Morena, Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb in an SGC VG3. This is the only graded example. Yeah, right it's here. a little different. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. I remember that. Yeah. Okay, he was with the A's. My bad, my bad. Um, so it's not just a snapshot of two baseball legends. Uh, it is an incredibly rare card from a new to the hobby collection and one that traveled thousands of miles from El Salvador. Did you get to pick that one up in El Salvador? I uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get to make that. Uh, that is unfortunate. That I would love to see some Tony Gizzi in El Salvador <laughs> pictures. Uh, this is the first example confirmed from the rare Tabacalera La Morena series from 1928, uh, and we have 160 different cards from this set 
including a complete run of the early card numbers, 95 through 120. So if you've never heard of it and you're interested, you got this is really... under an hour right there to get in there. Um, so a really interesting one. Um, and of course, if you're saying it's the only one known, it's the only graded one, it's at 11,000 right now. And you're featuring those two guys. Absolutely. I mean, two of the With absolute the greatest hats, hitters of all time. Uh, just a very interesting one. And guess what time it is, Tony? Oh, boy. Time for Tony to I'm kind of nervous here. Card. That was one of the things that I hated when I was in college was public speaking because I couldn't, I couldn't, if it's something that, if something that grabs you, something that really has a passion for you, that's, that's easy, easy to talk about. This is um, not public speaking. There's only no, I know. This is easy. Room. You can ask Chris Nerritt this and he, he'll, he'll tell you stories. <laughs> Anyways, this one, when I was, I was kind of going through yesterday, going through some of the, some of the cards and some of the prices, and this one really, really surprised me. Um, 1933 Gaudi Napoleon Lajoie card, of course, the one nobody could get. You had to write to the to the Gaudi Gum Company to uh, get this card. Everybody wanted. Everybody was, where is this card number? And um, when they sent them out, they had a, like a paper clip of most of them. That's right. So you right off the, right the bat, corner. yeah. So right off the bat, most of them were dinged up, and you know when they're sent through the mail. This one's a three, and it's at thirty-six thousand with a twenty-five thousand dollar estimate. Um, an incredibly difficult card. That's the one most people need for their set. Almost impossible to find it in high grade, and this one has just done incredibly well. Great centering on it, um, and uh, just a lot of people tracking it. They've got fifty-four minutes yet, so there is time to to still get a bid on this item, but uh, just a card that's really performing well. If you don't have a 33 Gaudi Lajoie, and many don't, now's the time. Well, anytime somebody ever calls us and, and says they have one, 99% of the time it's a copy. And it, right. You know, oh, this card's worth 16000 it says on the back. Well, <laughs> very rare do we ever get one that, um, you know, that, that one comes through, a real one that's not, a, that's not a already graded. So just a really cool card. You know what, Tony? That was worth the wait. Oh, for yes. So one of the things we're really excited about in this auction is we have an incredible run of 33 Sport Kings cards. And some of the finest in existence. Uh, starting with this one, this is Ty Cobb, card number one. I love the Sports Kings issue because it's all sports, and they, they were going for it. Mm -hmm. um, big time in 1931, 1933. In the midst of the Great Depression, and Gaudi was just killing it with their card promotions. Uh, they had the 33 Gaudi. This is the 33 Sport Kings. The Ty Cobb, one of three cards known to have survived in mint condition with only one rated higher by PSA. And this is a beautiful one. Surfaces are clean, uh, colors are deep, saturated, and inviting, Tony. <laughs> it's the only way to describe it. Vivid portrait, crisp details in a mint nine. And you know what? I'm just gonna hammer through these sport kings. Right they are here. they are beautiful. We've got a bunch of them. And yeah, there's some. They are beautiful, and yeah, just just like what you mentioned. You know, baseball cards. There were baseball cards produced, but this gives fans of other sports an opportunity to get their sports heroes. And um, yeah, it's, it's a fabulous group. set. Nice high grade set. Too. PSA near mint mint plus eight point five. Pop one, two higher. What's that at right now, Tony? Let me find out. That was going bananas earlier. Um, it's got this weird green background, but I've never seen it look finer than it 97,500. Has a 75,000 estimate on it. So moving. That's the, going to six figures. It's yeah. already there. Yeah. Um, this one is the Red Grange. We're talking about the multiple sports here. It's a PSA Mint 9. Pop four, none higher, right there. Forty-three thousand with a thirty thousand estimate. I mean, Red Grange is the guy that basically put football on the map. Before yes. him, it was all college, and nobody really cared about professional football. Great, he's the there, guy. All business. Yes, on this yes. One. Uh, when you talk pioneer and founding father, he's one of the guys that uh, made football what it is. Here's one of my favorites in the set. This is the Jim Thorpe, a PSA Mint Nine as well. Uh, this is an, just an incredible collection of Sport Kings here. And that's at 105000 right now. So every single one of these that, you, that you're bringing up is over the estimate already. And we have... 
These 52 just minutes left. Do not come out that often. No, so, not in that kind of grade. Yes, yeah, so when people get a chance, they're going to go after it. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's possibly my favorite in the set. I'm really unique that he's. You're picking is favorites now? This is Duke Kanahuamaka, and he is the father of surfing. At this time... Oh, that's who that... Sure. He okay. was a swimming gold medalist. He's from Hawaii, a hero there. Uh, just an incredible athlete, kind of in that uh, Jim Thorpe vein. He could kind of do it all. Gold medalist in swimming, the father of surfing. Right? Is that the guy that we... I know we have one coming up. A signed photo with Ruth in him? We sold that's one the guy? Uh, about a month ago. Okay. And, uh, yeah, the... Uh, tour of Japan team stopped in J in Japan, uh, the 1934 tour. In 33, they still weren't to Japan yet. Long trip. They stopped, and uh, Babe Ruth did some uh, swimming and boating with Duke there. Babe There's and the Duke. a great photo. All right, so we've got Newt Rockney here in a PSA Mint 9 as well. This is the Pop 1, none higher, ultimate PSA example of 33 Sport King. Uh, Newt Rockney, right there. Got some more sports coming here, don't worry. Bam, <laughs> 33 Sport King, Max Bear in an 8.5. That is pop one, only one higher for that one. Back when boxing was like, you know, one of the top three sports. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it was and boxing and it was He was the king at the time. And very cool inclusion in this set, Babe Dietrichson. Uh, the famed female athlete who could also do it all. This one is in a PSA MIMP 9, pop four, none higher. You may notice uh, many of these are none higher, none higher, none <laughs> higher. And you could tell by the prices that they're getting why they are that because um, they're just doing phenomenal. Absolutely. So, yeah, an incredible Sport Kings collection right there. And Tony, we mentioned... Heritage has more than just the sports department. Did you know that? Yeah. Yes. 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 So how much? Some time? of my some of my favorite people are in the comics division. Oh, okay, they're across the Jerry, hall from Jerry us. Jerry Steffen, looking at you, buddy. Oh, shout out. Yeah. How yeah. much time we got left till extended bit? We have uh, forty nine minutes. Forty nine minutes. We're gonna take a quick break and show you a little preview of our entertainment department's auction, which is going down next week. Enjoy. Hi there, this is Pete Howard, Consignment Director for Entertainment and Music for Heritage Auctions. And yep, working at home like everybody else right now, but just wanted to tell you about our upcoming Entertainment and Music Auction. Boy, are we excited about it. It's going to be just great. There are so many fun things. How about Linda Ronstadt's Grand Piano that she's owned for like 45 years. Can you imagine who's played that? How about the three working screenplays for King Kong, the movie, which were merged together to make the final script for the movie. We'll be selling those separately. Fantastic autograph collection in both, uh, you know, all aspects of entertainment. Uh, the continuing Dennis and Connie Daly monumental Beatles collection. How about a full set of Beatles autographs and with great providence, and the continuing on the poster tip, Interstate 5 Grunge Collection. But, so, concert posters being my specialty, we have a 1958 Alan Freed Big Beat rock and roll concert poster with Buddy Holly and the Crickets and Chuck Berry and Jerry Lee Lewis and, 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 killer poster. Hasn't been auctioned anywhere since last century. Certainly the first one will be auctioning, so that's leading our poster sale, along with lots of other great things you can see behind me. How about the Beach Boys from 1963? These are all super rare. How about Jim and Stevie Vaughn with a free keg from 1973? This stuff's out of control. Ike and Tina Turner, 1960? Look at a loving couple they are. And it's at the Fillmore Auditorium before any of those flamey posters were made. Just fantastic stuff. So really hope you can join us. Check us out online at ha.com slash 7221. That's the number of the auction. Thanks, and we'll see you there.
Tony, look at that. Our real estate department. We should get that place together. Uh, let's do it. When this is all over, we should get a place together. All right. I'll do it. I'll do it. So what's moving up the big board? What's, uh, what caught your eye? Yeah, 1948 to 55 Bowman and Leaf Baseball Shoebox Collection. A very popular thing for bidders. 4500 um, A lot of times people nice. buy those. Get they're some stuff break graded, up. break it up, kind of do. Gonna bring it back to us afterwards when exactly. they find the gems in there. Collectors love the shoebox collections. Yes. Um, another one, eighty forty five Opeachy wax box with forty eight unopened packs, one thousand fifty dollars. Um, you know, we've told you many times the unopened um, wax it just continues to appreciate in value, and you're starting to now see the eighties stuff. Even into the early 90s, yes. the stuff that was $10 a box is now getting to be $100. Your David Robinson rookie. It open. Yeah, it's, it's, it it's open. unbelievable. And I think, you know, as people get older, they collect what they did as a child. And you're starting to see the 90s There's stuff. There's some money behind it now. Yes. Uh, yep. That's all it takes. They want to they experience the same fun they had as, they were, as when they were a kid with their son opening up the same kind of product. Thankfully, that product, there was so much of it that it's not going to cost them an awful lot. Yes. But you are seeing across the board, the unopened as just continues to go up and up and up. Yeah, and plenty of great wax from all sports and across all eras and even some non-sports we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about this gem we've got right here, Tony. Yeah, we had a 1953 Satchel Page PSA 9 with none higher. Uh, it has a 20,000 estimate. It's at 24,000. These are notorious for the bottom right or left corner with the coloring on them. And this one with the bottom right corner being red. Of course it chipped easily. Um, centering on these things is very difficult to find. This one's got everything you could want. Great registration, great color. Um, that bottom right corner is really solid. It's a PSA 9 with none higher. Satchel Page. See, now I you're saying it. What's none that? higher. None higher. With so none higher. I get to fun, say what well, I'm kind of I'm kind of new to saying that. You're, you're a grizzled <laughs> veteran of saying that. But um, you know he would have been good at any any time period. There was a, one of the write ups I think I I read um, about Satchel Page and Willie Mays. Willie Mays made contact. And the next time he came up, I think uh, Page said, "Son, you're gonna have. I'm gonna give you three pitches. You're not gonna hit any of them." <laughs> and sure enough, one, two, three, he sat down. Just a great story from, you know, Satchel Page. one of my favorite quotes that I live by. Don't look back because something might be chasing you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, he's a guy that, you know, he's almost, he's almost a mythical figure in baseball Definitely. history. You know, what would have been had he been allowed to, to play against everybody else. And uh, a really nice Satchel Page um, from his major league career. Beauty. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves the 53 tops. Great portraits on all of them. Absolutely. One. This is one now, of course, in this auction, we have 51 Bowman mantles. We've got 52 tops mantles. We could talk about those uh, ad nauseum, of course. But uh, here's a unique mantle card. Uh, That's a hard one to find. This is the 54 in Red Heart mantle in a PSA Mint 9. There's only two higher. I love this one because it was a dog food promotion as if kids didn't bug their parents enough to get dogs now you got to get <laughs> you got to get the food, food to get a mickey mantle card the big league dog food as red heart advertised uh of course mantle is the key card in the set only two have graded higher than this one really cool uh if you have a mantle collection this is one that's a little bit harder to find uh kind of like the 52 burke ross some of those that are difficult to attain and this one's in a psa mint nine uh perfect centering bright colors and uh well any of them that 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 came in products yes you know some of them came in hot dog packages and some of them came in pizzas oh, the years. frank's wieners exactly <laughs> and they just you know right off the bat they were exposed to the elements and to you know grease and all that stuff where they were impossible to get right off the bat they were hard to find in nice condition tony i saw we didn't have a 55 tops we were going to talk about Gotta have to talk. Well, there's so many great 55 tops in this auction. If you collect them, it's I'm a sure beautiful set. Them. It's a, a beautiful set. set. Yep. So I pulled this one out. Uh, this is the Harmon Killer Brew, which uh, I don't think gets a lot of publicity. And much like the man featured on it, kind of underrated. Yeah. But a great card here. Love the Washington Nationals logo that's on it. 
uh, with the top of the capital and the W in front of it. And this one is a PSA Mint 9. There's only one higher. So. I love how there's the action shot and then there's the portrait and the team emblem. You know, everything's kind of spaced out appropriately. And, uh, yeah, that's a beautiful card. And it's, I mean, a guy who is one of the greats. One 500 the greats home run club. And, uh, Collectors appreciate this one. We've got a fifteen thousand dollar estimate. It's at fourteen thousand right, right there. Now. So we've got forty minutes for people to get bids in. Yes. Uh, there is time. Nineteen thirteen national game tight cop PSA nine fourteen hundred. Cross candy, Mike. There we go. Eighteen thousand and one of the one peop one of the ones that someone that people are kicking themselves over probably to this day. Two thousand playoff contenders. Unopened box is at eleven thousand five hundred, and that that is modern the, wax in the last twenty years yeah, is going bananas. It is, and it is, and it's going to continue to do so. You're seeing it with the basketball stuff right now, yes. and with basketball starting back up, you're going to see that continue. And baseball is so popular, and people are just waiting for. As I said, with the video, unopened video games, who are these monsters that weren't opening these I boxes know. of I cards? I don't it know. Wasn't it wasn't me. It wasn't you. Yeah, I know that. That's for sure. <laughs> So, so this one here, another great mantle card. This is the 59 Home Run Derby. Yes. Is this you? Yes. That's me, yeah. Oh, I, I remember it. watching this on Classic Sports or watching it um, in syndication, Home Run Derby. It was only around for one year. The guy who did the show, Mark, I forget what his last name is, died following the one year of production. Really? And uh, you'd have two of these superstar athletes. You know, Willie Mays was in it. I know Mantle, of course, was. Ernie Banks was, and they would... Just, you know, go inside a stadium and then the lob them, you know, batting practice pitches, and it was a home run derby. And at the time, it was a, you know, it'd be, it were decades ahead of their time. Right. It was a reality show. There's a lot of it conversation. It was. That was the first reality show, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, uh, they'd talk to the players. The players would talk to they each would other. Sit, yeah, he would sit. They would sit in the uh, dugout, and there was an umpire there. And, you know, if you hit a home run, it's a home run. If you don't, it's an out. And, Easiest um, job an umpire could have. Yeah, right exactly. even they can't screw it up. in or out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did produce a set, and these are really hard to find. Especially in high grade. And this we have a mantle SGC seven at seventy seven fifty, with a fifteen thousand estimate. So there's some room to for that one, but there are fifty eight people tracking it. So there should be spirited bidding. No surprise. These are hard to find. They are so. really difficult to find, and to find them in high grade is almost impossible. There's a bunch of those guys sitting back. They got their bid in early, and they're waiting to take their opportunity. Yep. Extended bidding. I like the guy who waits until there's like ten seconds left in extended bid. And then they makes the bid, then he makes the bid, and then then the other guy has to come back and try to top <laughs> that a little bit. All right, um, we've got another comment here. Oh, from YouTube, one of the millennials, perhaps. Uh, the yes, millennials. The cameraman is excited about that. Ira Duane, Tony and Mike are the best. No, oh. you're the best, Ira. Uh, thank you for watching. I noticed he put Tony's name first there, uh, but I appreciate the mention. Thank I'm going to PayPal for you for that. Thank there. you. <laughs> and thank you for watching on YouTube. We have a great YouTube channel. Uh, I highly recommend you watch some of the videos on the sports channels. Uh, we have some great highlight videos that are very professionally done and showcase how great we are, but uh, there's some good entertainment on there. Uh, some the we didn't start the we didn't start the uh, we didn't start the hobby was it <laughs> yeah. uh, that's still uh, one of my favorites <laughs> so. up next we have a 1965 Steve Carlton rookie and most people remind re, don't remember him with the Cardinals but in fact he did come up with them he was on their 68 I think World Series team or no 67 World Series team. But um, this one here, the 9.5 at 2,500. I challenge um, you to find a better unibrow on a card. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah, that one's... Anthony, Anthony Davis can eat your heart out for yeah. that on this one. I mean, Anthony Davis is, is nice, but it's finely manicured. This yeah, is, this uh, one is just... 60s era, in your face. Yeah, yeah, but a really, <laughs> really nicely centered card. Four razor sharp corners, 9.5. Um, if you want a Steve Carlton, who's one of the greatest pitchers of all time, this is your chance and just a phenomenal card. Um, three graded at that with only one higher. And Tony, we don't have it out here. You don't have the us. next one, but uh, this is one that has always challenged collectors. And 
for 1990s collectors, this one, um, these have always been expensive. They've always been collected and always been hard to find in high grade. We have a 1991 Topps Desert Shield Complete set number four on the registry. Uh, these were only issued overseas out to the troops and getting them back into the States proved to be very difficult. Um, you know, they didn't have top, top, top loaders. They didn't have, you know, the, the nine pocket sheets to preserve these things. A lot of them got, you know, opened up and then people kept a couple and then threw them away. Right. A lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of them never even got opened. A lot of them probably were, were just discarded, but, um, this is one of the finest sets. It is right now at... Eighteen thousand. Oh, I'm sorry, twenty-three thousand. There we go. That's grand. better. Twenty-three thousand. Uh, number four on the registry. You know, it's a ready-made collection. Um, it takes uh, so much time and time and effort to put this set that together. That's a hard set. Ungraded. To put together. Yeah, and then to find them, you know, to get everything graded, um, just an incredibly difficult set. And most people think of '90s. They think, oh, there, there's a million of these out there. This is one of the cases where it's not that. Um, they said, I believe I read, there was like a, a, approximately 7,000 sets produced. And uh, so, again, very, very difficult to find these and in this kind of grade. And this is one that <clears throat> somebody's going to buy this set, it's going to disappear. It's not, you're not going to see it at another Exactly. It's going to stay in, it's gonna stay in somebody's collection. And Absolutely. it's going to go up in value in five years. That's going to be worth a lot more than it is right now. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. good opportunity for some collector who's prospecting and looking for something. And, as some of these there. guys go in the Hall of Fame they will go up in value, absolutely. That, that's a really good point. And here's one of the more modern era cards as well. Yeah, 1993, Derek Jeter, who would be going in the Hall of Fame probably in the next couple of weeks, but because of the pandemic, it's going to be next year, and it's going to be a heck of a celebration, I'm sure, with, yes. with him going in. Uh, this is the gold card. You got one gold card per pack, but with 792 cards in a set, getting a gold a gold Jeter, uh, pretty pretty tough odds. Did you ever pull one out? Back no, then? I never did. And if I, you know <laughs> what? I should I should actually look. Who knows? Maybe I did, and I don't. I, I never realized it. Could be. Let's go, mom. Let's check it out. Should we go to Northern Wisconsin <laughs> and try and find that elusive uh, Jeter gold? Love card? to visit your parents. Oh, place my mom. Every time and this she's is like, all over, we're going there for a fish fry. All right. Oh, she always says, "Hey, can I can I bring your cards?" I'm like, "No, nah, no, I'll keep them there, mom." So <laughs> and Susie it, there says, might be. Yeah, keep there, them there. Keep them there, though, so there, there could be a gold jeter in there. But uh, for modern era, um, and even these, it's tough to find them centered. And yes. uh, this one centered, of course, four sharp corners, and it's jeter. Jeter is, um, you know, one of the icons in, in What more needs to be said? Am I right? Nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just getting a, a text from one of our bidders and consigners saying that the, uh, that the um, Wayne Gretzky box... It's at ninety thousand right now. Whoa! That's and that, that's got to be all in. Um, in that one, um, you know, the seventy and what seventy nine eighty, Opeachy box with the tape on. This one doesn't have the tape intact, but they're um, incredibly hard to find. And the Gretzky card, we're going to be talking ab ab about one coming up here at some point, um, is really hard to find, and that just tells you what the unopened market is right now. Absolutely, and. Uh... Do you think that's going to beat the '86 Fleer? I think it is. Yeah, box. that would yeah. that would be that's a story amazing right to me. There. That's amazing to me. I mean, and I will say this on the on the '7980. There's less Opeachy boxes out there than there are the '86 86, 87 Fleer. But the '86 '87 Fleer is this at, at its own at its own level with the Jordan. And there's a and lot the of, others too. A lot of Hall of Famers in there, and a lot yes. of them are seeing an uptick right they now. They are across um, the board. They are. Very good point. So we're talking modern cards. Let's throw this one out there. 09 Bowman Chrome Draft Mike Trout. This is the Prospect Refractor. Uh, number 359 out of 500. It's a BGS Jim Mint 9.5 with the 10 autograph. Uh, Trout cards doing pretty well right now. Uh, <laughs> He's got a good future. So this one, current bid, $15,001. So there's some guy sitting some out there got that. sweating right now, just sweating. <laughs> he was smart. If you bid over the next increment, you can bid off increment. So that's how he got the $1 in there. And it's working right now, but uh, our estimate was right at 15000 He said, pretty good estimate. I'll throw another dollar on top of that. It's working. And now right he's now. a high bidder. Yes, and it worked. So the subgrades on this one, centering 9, corners 9.5, edges 10, surface 9.5. Great investment right here. Anything Mike Trout is a great investment. 
This is a great one. And we have a really nice collection of modern baseball cards. And he just keeps it, he just keeps getting better and better and better. And How's he better. doing this season? You got the you got those. No, stats? he's, he's well, he's at about two hundred right now. But there's a lot of <laughs> Tony's time. Tony's down on everybody. No, I'm here. sorry. I <laughs> hey, he's doing better than uh, Christian Yelich. So well, I'm doing better than Christian Yelich right now. <laughs> this is the 2012 Bowman nice. Chrome Prospect Autograph Super Fractor for his solar right here. <clears throat> this is a BGS Jim Mint 9.5 with the 10 autograph. And uh, a lot of people looking to make noise with this one right here, so it's kind of creeping at a low number at the moment. But I think it's going to see some activity shortly. Uh, that's a little Mike Provenzel tip right there, <laughs> Tony. So don't think you're going to get away with that oh, one. Oh, man, current, I thought I had that one. At the current bid Dog right now. It. That's not going to happen. Shoot. Uh, another favorite of the current era. This is the 2013 Bowman Chrome draft pick, Aaron Judge. This is the Black Refractor in a BGS Jim Mint 9.5 with an autograph 10. Uh, a lot of memorable moments in his first three seasons, that's for sure. And he's a Yankee and he's a power a hitter, and there is a very good chance they will go deep into the playoffs this year. If they win a World Series, that card is going to jump up. Yes, a, great a lot time. of uh, great modern cards featuring great players. Trout, we were talking about, Yelich. Uh, we have a great Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, card in here. Don't but, make me feel old, Provenzale. But Aaron Judge is a Yankee, so yes, he's yes. got that advantage. Collectors lean that direction. Um, we've seen what the Jeter cards are doing now. I'm not saying Judge is the next Jeter. Uh, I don't even think they're really comparable, but he has the chance to become the next face of the franchise. A World the, Series you know, for him. What would that do for his collectibles? It would yes, skyrocket. A ton. And uh, you think they're going to win it this year? Is that what I, is that what I heard? Everybody says Dodgers, Yankees. I mean, it's it's such a weird season, and with the expanded playoffs, it's going to be hard. I don't know how a favorite. You know, and those other are two, than the Dodgers, two teams you never see in the World Series. Yes, so exactly. Would love to see that. The Dodgers, I mean, are unless they have a lot of injuries. I just, uh, I mean, they are really set. Here's a great one from uh, Javier Baez. This is the 2015 Topps Chrome rookie autographs. BGS pristine 10 and the 10 autograph there. Uh, he's got a good autograph for the, the modern guys. So we'll, yeah, most uh, of them it's just it's it's disgusting for most fan, of the guys. But, uh, I am a fan of his. Uh, I could pick it up out of a crowd and read it. And it's uh, the subgrades on this one, centering 10, corners 9.5, and then edges and surface are 10. So only 0.5 away from absolute perfection right there. <laughs> so close tony you are absolute perfection no uh, don't give me a big no edge is off for centering on uh, tony it's <laughs> perfectly centered um two more real quick and then we're going to take one more quick break and talk some football cards all right all right so this is the 2015 tops chrome rookie super fractor from francisco lindor are you a fan of his tony uh one of the great young 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 players in the sport and Absolutely. uh Everyone's wondering where he's going to end up playing his, you know, formidable years. And we saw a record price for his card we in our did. last card yep. auction. A guy who can do it all, too. Great collection of Lindor cards in this auction, which you should take a look at. Um, that's one that is moving up the charts. He is. He can do everything. He can do everything. It's true. Yeah. Um, I mean, he can, he can do it all. Five-tool player. Hard to find those, too. All right, so we're going to talk about this one just briefly. We've got 27 minutes for people to bid. This is the 2020 Bowman Chrome Prospect Autograph Super Fractor, Bobby Witt Jr. from Colleyville, Texas. It's uh, amazing. When he right got, I remember when he got drafted last year, and my goodness. So this one is at $30,000 right now. Tony you know, someone's going to look loser. back. If, if he turns out to be a great player, they're going to say, or It'll we're going to say, we're going to say, oh my God, do you remember when we had that Bobby Witt Jr. card and went for, it was at 30 grand? Right. Yeah, I mean, you and know, when you're talking the best of the best. For 1.8 million. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and he, who did he get drafted by? The, the Royals? The Royals. So a small market team, you know, right now they're having a rough go. He's going to get a chance. They're doing just like what the Astros did years ago. Not saying that they're hitting the, banging the drum. What they're doing is they're getting prospects and they're going to be, have go for their big run and he's a centerpiece and there's a, you know, they're going to have a chance to, you know, to have their World Series run, hopefully. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to talk some non-baseball cards. How about that? But first, Tony. Non-baseball? Yes. Oh, my. Tony, are you a Van Halen fan? Uh, I love 80s rock. 
Yes. Love 80s rock. So our guitar department has a very interesting piece. Uh, I think you're going to like it. All Take right. a look. <laughs> one of the most iconic and picked apart sounds in all of rock and roll. The opening chord to A Hard Day's Night by, of course, the Beatles. And the instrument that made that sound, a 1965 Rickenbacker 3612 OS Fire Glow semi-hollow body electric guitar. Available for auction, August 9th at Heritage Auctions Vintage Guitar and Musical Instruments Signature Event. That's some rock and roll right there, Tony. Uh, that's our guitar department. We have a guitar, guitar department, if you can believe it. But let's, what, how much time we got left, Tony? We have 22 minutes for initial bids. Let's talk some football cards. Oh, la all right, let's do it. You're up first. I'm up first. 1965 Fred Belitnikoff. Um, most of the time you see him, you think of stick him, you think of that goofy mustache, rookie card, <laughs> tall boy, is what they call these things, hard to store. Um, it's a PSA near mint to mint eight right now. It is at 1,050. Uh, just a beautiful card of a guy that helped turn around the Oakland Raiders and made them into winners. Um, difficult, very difficult card to find in high grade. Absolutely. I know this is one of your favorites, Tony, right here. Reason I love this card, it's not when he was at his best, it was when, at the end of his career, but because of these colorful borders, this reminds me of the 75 Tops baseball set a little bit, with these really vibrant colors, and um, of course, as we see, a lot of times these things chipped easily, and uh, this 1971 Tops Bart Star card, uh, PSA Mint 9 at 855, the end of his career, um, they weren't winning titles anymore, but a very hard card to find in top grade. Absolutely. And we're staying with pose, it. Too. Too. Yes. Um, mean Joe Green, number one pick of the draft, or top 
or I think he was the number pick, at least top three pick. Go with it. He's the one that one really, when the when the Steelers started to win, that was the reason why he anchored that team as probably the probably the number one player in team history. Um, he had a mean disposition to him. He would he would, he played at North Texas, didn't That's he? That's correct. He was the he mean green. Team. Yeah, and um, he turned the Steelers. They didn't win right off the bat, but they started to win, and he was the reason why. This is his rookie card, which Impact he shared. Impact player. He was, he was, and um, you know they needed something like that because it was an absolute terrible organization for forty <laughs> years. Shots um, fired. Until he came around and really got them going. We have his rookie card here, and again, that seventy-one tops, notorious for chip corners, centering. Um, this one is a mint nine at sixty-five hundred, with an eight thousand estimate. And after that, we've got a 2000 Tom Brady SP Authentic, BGS 9.5, a gem mint, 11,500. With the That's white borders, card. that is amazing. Just think of how many times people walk by these cards, or if they got them, they probably just tossed them in a commons bin. How many times <laughs> these things sold for a quarter or 50 cents at first year? And he turned into what he did, and... Uh, you know, now he's he's with Tampa Bay. I just saw his first card Very today. Very excited. To oh, see what happens it was there. crazy. I opened up some a pack of uh, 2020. Um, oh, what was it? it was, I opened up my first pack of 2020 football cards today, and Tom Brady as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. <laughs> I don't know how they <laughs> Hold did on it. Hold on to that. It, I, they're selling them. They're selling them on eBay. His first card. It's just weird to see him in a diff with a different team. It's going to be must see football though. I mean, him and Gronk together. It's going to be fun. Change to that uniform, which is. Yeah, they actually have a. I, I like the uniforms, but yeah, it's uh, it's totally different. It yeah. is, it is, and I mean, and you I want saw to talk about McCoy signed with them he, today? He did, Another he did. KG Bed <laughs> jumping on to try and get a ring. Trying to get that. It'll be interesting to to see how that goes. Though. Another great quarterback right here. This one on the front end of his career. This is the 2017 Panini Contenders Optic, Patrick Mahomes, the magenta printing plate. This one is a uh, near mint to mint eight because of the surface, a big issue with them, uh, but you just gotta deal with it because it's the magenta printing plate, but an autograph 10 from the former MVP, not the reigning MVP. <laughs> oh, but, I was gonna call you on that and say, no, no, no. And I'm like, no, yeah, he's right he's, on that. He's, he's right. reigning Super Bowl MVP right now. Uh, but we will. And he's a, he's a, a, he's a Texan, isn't he? He is. He's from where? He's from like Tyler, isn't he? Right around there. Went to Texas Tech. Uh, oh, yeah! yeah. Uh, Shots fired, as as Provo would say. <laughs> he had to squeeze that one out. So that I wasn't fun. Pulled that Mahomes out. Sorry. This this one is a beautiful example right here. This is the flawless Patrick Mahomes rookie signature autograph PSA Jim Mint Ten on this one. Uh, Limited version out of 15, so a lot of people are going to be chasing this one. Uh, it's got an $8,000 estimate. It's already there. This is going to see some action in a few moments. And just think about him. He didn't play at all his rookie year. Think what you could have gotten that for his yeah. rookie year. And uh, That's why the sports you know, that's cards the market thing is so hot about now. those tech quarterbacks. They put, all put up great state stats in college and then flame out in the pros. So you're right. His, you know, those rookie cards, people were thinking, oh, he's going to yep. be the next – Gosh, I can't even think of a tech quarterback <laughs> name. Uh, who, know, who knows? I used to remember when Aaron Rodgers came out, they said, oh, he, he holds the ball too high and all of that kind of stuff. And and they were right. He never did anything. He, what a hack. <laughs> what a hack. He can't even keep a girlfriend. My goodness. Just <laughs> kidding. Uh, you know Rodgers is a big fan of yeah, this I'm show. Yeah, I'm sure. He watches he's going to hate time. us now. Aaron, he's just kidding. He's just kidding. Uh, this... From the reigning MVP, the 2018 National Treasures Lamar Jackson rookie patch autograph. Great one, limited to 99. This is number 19. Dynamic. So, yes. Wow, he can do uh, things in a football. Another game. shocker there uh, that people dismissed, didn't give him a chance. Second and round, I think, there. wasn't he? Or was he? Ooh, he was late right the at the end of the first round. He might have been at the end of the first round. <laughs> the okay. Ravens pick. They were in the mix. So. Uh, but yeah, the uh, autograph is a 10, the card a 9.5, um, and I think he's going to continue to have a great career, and I don't think that was a flash in the pan, so a great investment in his rookie card right here. Uh, Tony, 
Can you talk wax for a moment? I've got two, and uh, as we've mentioned, or we've said it more than once, you're starting to see growth in even some of the quote-unquote newer stuff. 78 tops. Tony Dorsett rookie, a box, $1,000. And that one has a thousand dollar estimate, so it's right at the estimate right now. The one that I grew up with it has special meaning for me. The eighty four tops, thirty six unopened packs. I remember buying these as a kid. I remember being sick and mom, can you give me a couple packs? Sure, thirteen hundred dollars for an unopened box. Um, again, you're seeing these things climb up. Your your Marino, your Elway, your Those you know key rookie Dickerson years. rookies, and they're hard to find them centered. Yes. That's why your Marinos and your Elways are so expensive to find them in high, in high grade because of the centering issues. And uh, that one has a spe- I was 12 years old at the time. No, I was 8 years old at the time. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I was doing the math in my Woo! head as well. I was like, uh, I mean, we work in the sports department. Math is a Yeah, really math is, is suit. Hopefully, hopefully nobody saw that one. Hopefully Chris Ivey didn't see that one. <laughs> I think we were born right around the He's same time. He's not watching. No, he won't. Well, yeah, I think he is. <laughs> <laughs> so should we talk some basketball tony i can't wait for tomorrow are you kidding me i don't know i'm, I'm counting down the hours too oh um so here we've got one of my favorites a classic basketball this is 1980 tops larry bird dr j magic johnson right here this one's in a psa mint nine this one's a favorite among collector among collectors uh thanks to the perforation process and traditionally less than perfect centering on them. Hard to find in high grade. Print uh, dots on this card especially, too. Yes. On, that, on the, I think on the bird portion of it. I mean, I, mean, I remember I had one. I'm like, this is perfect. And it came back a seven. I'm like, what do you mean a seven? <laughs> There's print dots on those things, and it's really hard to find them in top grade. And they're always going to have value, especially the high grade ones. And that one is one of the nicest. And this is a card that's definitely creeping up. Um, we sold a 10 for 120000 not long ago. So this one's in a 9. We've got an estimated 8000 It's at eleven five right yeah, there. And I would amazing. not be surprised to do, see it do much more than that. Um, oh, Tony, you're up. Let me pull this bad boy out. Let's just check the bid board real quick. Yeah, please do. Uh, let me see. 62 tops did cut. 3700 Ooh. And that one, again, with, with the black borders is really tough to find. Michael Jordan, 2012 Fleer Retro Buyback Autographs, 6250. We're going to talk a little bit about him. Um, the Brady Bunch, partially graded, set 2900. Uh, the Francisco Lindor, uh, 310. So, yeah, things are starting to make their move as our savvy bidders are... Got just over 10 minutes just to over get 10. those bids in. For those of you who waited to the last second to get your initial bid in, uh, extended bidding is going to begin shortly. And Tony, speaking of Michael Jordan cards... Yeah, this is the actual rookie card. I know uh, yes. 86, 87 is the one that's kind of uh, referred to as his rookie, but this is the first card. It's a star company made, uh, made cards, and... Uh, and 84 was the first year, I believe, and, of course, That's Michael correct. Jordan's true rookie card. I think there's going to be there's gonna come a day where these are going to just skyrocket and go up a lot. You're starting to see, I mean, with everything Jordan, you are seeing a lot of growth, but um, the star card, uh, back at 9, of course they're hard to find them centered. Of course, there's this was the top card on the team set, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of times the corners got dinged when you opened them up. And with the red borders, it's really hard to find bent them. around the edge. Exactly. Of it, the yes. There, not much yep. protection. So you know, if it was in the middle, you have you you do have some protection. But this one was the top card, of course, of the, of the top player. Great for promotion. Yes, absolutely. And I was an idiot and never bought any because I believe <laughs> they did make it to our area because one of my friends that I grew up with did buy the Jordan one, or did buy that set. So. Tony talking about our lack of prowess and foresight collecting reminds me of the uh, those who can't do coach, and that's why we work at an auction house. <laughs> we know about it. That we know is the a, history. That is we a know great the trends. point. We just yeah. couldn't do it ourselves, nope. so here nope. we are. Because I would have been the guy who would have opened them all up. I right. just, that's the way I was. I just, you know, I, couldn't I couldn't imagine help. Tony keeping anything <laughs> unopened. We have 11 minutes left. Um, Mike Trout, 2009 Donner's Elite, extra edition autograph, 3,300. 
2500 for the SGC5 Hank Aaron 54 tops. So uh, lots of action. And Tony, you were talking about the 86 Fleer Jordan. Let's do it. We've I've never a, owned that card. We've got a few And I never will probably. Whatever Jordan 86 Fleer level you're at, you're looking for, we've got it. This one's the 8.5 here. That's at 4,900 right now. That's going to do more, no doubt. Tony, what do you think? Wow, about? there's a PSA 9 at 11,000. This is the 9. That's right the here. one. Wow. That's unbelievable. That was like a three, four thousand dollar card for so long, and after the documentary, it pretty much doubled. I think we got as high as fourteen thousand for one, and uh, we did in the last is, auction, the last that, show we did. Remember that? Tony? Yeah, that was a record breaker. That is just unbelievable. And you're starting to see the sticker. Um, you're starting yes. to see those go. I had an eight, but, but again, I was not smart to keep it. I sold. Well. It. Yeah. That's the BGS nine. Where where is that one? That at? one is know. at sixty seven fifty right now. Nice, very nice. Yeah, I mean the course... Jordan market. And we're gonna have a Michael Jordan auction coming up here, and uh, it's gonna be the That's greatest true. Jordan auction of all time. And there we go. There's the PSA Jim Mint ten Jordan. Drum roll, <clears throat> sixty two thousand five hundred. So, Ooh. yeah, I mean uh, the Jordan market. I mean for the longest time that was a thirty five thousand. Thirty thousand dollar card and it's doubled plus, so <laughs> seventy five thousand all in with the buyer's premium. So uh, that is the Jordan market is as strong as it's ever been. Another part that's strong right here. This one I had to pull out. Who is it? Who is it? Kobe. Oh yeah, favorite card of the modern era here. One of them. One of them. I mean. Everybody loves the Jordan rookie. This is the 96 Tops Chrome Kobe Bryant. This is the refractor in a PSA Mint 9. A beautiful example um, with the refractor variant. This is a 28,000 mm -hmm. right now. Uh, Kobe stuff doing very great, of course. He had a lot of fans, a lot of collectors, <clears throat> and they've really been coming out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. uh, he... It's going to go into the Hall of Fame, too. Same situation as Jeter, just waiting on that to happen. Um, we're coming up on August 24th, 824. I think that's going to be a big day on social media for Kobe. And uh, the, with his and, two numbers. And the thing on these, I mean, you, you could buy a box of, of chrome, and you got two refractors in the entire box. Yes. So, I, I mean, it, the, the chances of getting one of these... It's so slim, and there were centering issues on these things. I remember the Iverson, the Ray Allen, the Kobe. There, you know, you'd look on eBay and all that, and if to find them center was so difficult. So this yes. card was never easy to a lot get. Of, a lot of talent in that set. Yeah, uh, uh, one of the great drafts of all time. A lot of disappointment for collectors looking for high grade examples. Yes, there. yes. Uh, I bought one pack of these. That's all I bought. Love that one. Some chipping on the border issues too. With yeah, issue. yeah. That's a real stellar example of that. This one, uh, so LeBron cards are doing well of late, you may have noticed. Uh, this is the old three tops chrome LeBron James in a PSA Gem Mint 10. This is at $12,000 right there. Uh, LeBron, of course, all the accolades, all the everything. Um, any card of his is going to be a great investment right now. I've, been, I've been telling people. Great example. I've been telling people to buy his autograph. And um, you're starting to see those prices you don't have go to whisper up. It. We're, we're supposed to advise these people what to do. Hey, Mike, guess what I'm telling everybody? <laughs> no, I've been telling people buy your LeBron stuff. You're seeing it with Jordan. You're seeing, it, of course, with Zion, with Kobe. He's the next one. Yeah. That if he does win a title, a, another one, it's going to spike his stuff. Yeah, going from three to four titles is a big step. The, it, it, it could go up 30%. Everything could go up 30%. I could see that happening. And this is one of the most iconic modern cards produced right here in a Jim Mint. In. Ooh, how much time we got left, Tony? We have seven minutes. Where are we at on the big board? We have 1959 Tops, five cent wax pack. A 59 Tops pack, 3,800. Um, 39 Play Ball, Ted Williams, PSA 4.5 is at 3,600. Um, 69 Lilo Cinder, PSA 8, 15,500. Um, 89 score box, 1150. Wow, those have gone up. Um, Russell, PSA 7, $20,000, which is really, really That's good. That's a great price that. for yep. 7. So it's not, it's not just modern Iconic basketball, it's kind of everything. It's yeah. Amazing. Um, this is the 0405 SP Game Used Edition. 
Kobe Bryant, the significant numbers. And this is a uh, BGS Jim Mint 9.5 with the 10 autograph. Flawless blue signature here. Kobe's one of those guys who got a great autograph. He always did. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a beautiful one. Uh, it's kind of interesting with him. The example, he's got the uh, old school blue. Oh, I like uh, that. Lakers. Yeah, that's the Beautiful Minneapolis colors. There. His autograph went, you know, he did Kobe Bryant at, when he, he did a full name when he was in high school into his first year in, in the NBA. Then he went to Kobe 8. But then after he retired, when he signed with Panini, he did the nice full name signature again. So yes. he kind of evolved. Brought and it went, back around. He did. He really did, which is rare for athletes. Usually it gets less, 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 and less, and less. And did you pull this one out or is this me? This is me. This is me. So uh, very cool one here. This is the 0708 Sweet Shot Jordan and Bryant dual signature. Wow. Uh, this one's definitely going to see some action. It's yeah. a 10 grand right now. Uh, the full signature from Kobe on this one. It's a BGS Mint 9 with nine autographs. And uh, the thing I really like about this one is Kobe's looking up into the distance and Jordan's looking at him on it like, you trying to take my spot? Which he was attempting <laughs> to take his spot. No doubt about that. But a very cool card. It's just the way Jordan, um, when he gave that speech at Kobe's funeral, kind of made him more human. Yes. It made Jordan appear more human than what we, you know, kind of gave us a look into him that you never see. And this one, tomorrow, the big night. <laughs> 3600 for the Greek freak, Giannis. With a fifteen hundred dollar cool estimate, card, really it is. Cool it is. He's so skinny, and man, his first year he could not do much well. Couldn't dribble, couldn't shoot. He had a, a great athletic ability, but he worked himself into being coming what he is today. So thirty six hundred right now with a fifteen hundred dollar estimate. A lot of tools and the hard work yeah. really crafted them. That's it's just like Tony. You know, when oh, we first started doing this man. show, he could barely get a word out. <laughs> Uh, he just would not talk. Public speaking 101. Was, was Absolutely. very shy and reserved. Wouldn't uh, laugh at anything. Kept it all to himself. It took now, him. It took him. But now, look at him go. Four uh, minutes left. And there's the next big thing right there. Yes. This is a budding superstar and a great opportunity here. This is the 2018 Panini Contenders. Luka Doncic, local hero. This is the rookie ticket swatches. And this is a uh, BGS 8.5 with the 10 autograph. Uh, he's got the short, sweet signature, does, but it looks good. It looks good. Uh, very popular Oh, card his here. stuff has just gone crazy this Yeah, year. so centering 9.5, corners 9, edges 7.5, but surface 9.5 here. And the 10 autograph from Luca. Um, time to invest in this young superstar yeah, is yeah. now. Yeah. Right now, and if you want to get this one, you haven't bid yet. How much time do they have, Tony? They have three minutes, so you better. Three minutes. This is a lot. I'll just help you out. Five, six, five, <laughs> nine, two, if you got to type it in. That uh, buy is 92.50 right now. There so. we go. Oh, and yeah, here. there's a couple of people. I know you're very big on, fighting on Zion, it. Tony. Oh, okay. I love Zion. I hope he's. He's so good for the league. Big smile, this big is the game. Don Russ Optics, Zion, right that here. That is at the. Yes, PSA Jim Mint 10. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. 1450 it's at right now. Um, his stuff is just... It's uh, a cool psychedelic looking... It is. I love the I like uh, green borders. And again, those things chip very easily. You know, those metal borders like that, they, they, they chip and they're hard to keep them nice. <laughs> this is the Fanatics Green Wave yeah, yeah. one here. But uh, cool, and he's like... Give me that ball. Give me that ball. Exactly. <laughs> Which is really his attitude when he's out there. And then you mentioned it earlier. Let's get to it now. This yeah, the me. Wayne Gretzky Opeachy. I believe I told this story before. I had somebody bring me eight of these things one time. Every Ooh. single, every, and they were all in rough shape, of course. But every single one was off center. Every single one. This is the complete opposite. The Gretzky Opeachy, the preferred one. Um, these do much better than the... Probably a little more collectible than the uh, tops are, and uh, this one here is, I believe, that twenty-eight thousand. That's right. It was, or it is, and uh, again, those blue borders chipping. The rough cut on the one edge is just notorious on these things. It's almost a given that they're going to have them, but uh, a great, great Gretzky. And again, you're seeing it with the unopened stuff. Even if, even in an unopened box, it's hard to find one centered and with nice corners. So this is. Let me take a look. At the best of the best. 
beautiful. Yeah. No surprise. Oh, All right, and that is the Gretzky. The past, here's the future right here. <laughs> the uh, Sidney Crosby, this is the 0506, the cup autograph and jersey rookie this is a bgs jim mint 9.5 with a 10 autograph one of the finest sydney crosby cards out there modern cards in basketball football and baseball are doing well hockey coming up too so this is a great one to invest in and tony right now thirty two thousand dollars for this and i'm telling wow. you it's not done it's no, not done no you this is when all the big boys come out that's they come right. up to uh, play now. When they know that this card's going to be selling for sixty, seventy thousand 70000 a few years down the road, they're going to jump in and get it right now. And Tony, I was glad to see you marked this one. I wondered if you did it by mistake. No, I didn't actually. Okay. No, I, I, I am. Oh, love it. I'm not a non sport guy as much, but I will say <laughs> the one set that, and I think you could probably agree with it. Um, that is just so beautiful and so uh, just the graphics on these things is there's nothing like it the horrors of war and um, I've seen some of the original artwork of course that stuff always does well yes. but it is an iconic set and just the graphics the drawings the illustrations these are just uh, I don't know I just they they just grab you and um, sometimes they're a little gory but um, this one here is the horrors of war Moors. Moors attack city to avenge ancient defeat. PSA nine, none higher. Twelve hundred and fifty dollars with a thousand, with a fifteen hundred dollar estimate. And I just, uh, anytime I see those, I always have to look. And, um, <laughs> and what just, do you know about the Moors attack in nineteen thirty eight? I, I don't know much it. about it. I just know it's a <laughs> heck of a cool card. And I love looking at those things. The graphics, just the looks on the on the people's faces with the aliens and just everybody. It's. Uh, I mean, it was it was a great set in that they weren't shying away and, um, you know, sugarcoating war. No. You know, you saw horrors of war is a good title for it. Yeah, it is. It is. It's just such a unique set. There's be. there's nothing like it, you know, and for and for that time period too. Yes, um, and a lot of the times, you know, the promotions back then and in the eras to come um, would really uh, paint a glamorous picture of yes. war and uh, through the vein of patriotism. This set does not. No, this is the no, real face no. of it. Uh, so very unique in that. Um, and last one before we get to extended bidding, Tony, I know this is one of your personal favorites right there. I think everybody from our generation's personal favorite, Ken Griffey Jr., this is not a hard card to find, okay? We're not going to say this is a hard card to find. It is a hard card to find in this condition. I'll never forget when I had, I had my 89 and I, I sent it to PSA and I got a, a 5. I'm like, what the heck? This thing's perfect. <laughs> a lot of them have creases on them um, mm -hmm. that were uh, I, uh, unintentionally probably done in a factory. Um, this one, a Gem Mint 10, $1,300. There's a lot of them out there, but that's a card a lot of us... Mike and yes. Mike and I included. I remember the search back in the day. That's the one that we Couldn't searched for. We bought packs for that card, and uh, to see that card at thirteen hundred dollars in the Gem Mint Ten with the with the uh, white borders, um, that just is amazing to me. Yes. It really is because it's not a good choice. Good card. Right yes. there. So, what's the big clock say right now? I've got ten oh three. Extended bidding has begun. At this point, you can only bid in session one on lots you've already bid on, but you can still bid on lots in session two. So plenty of great material in there. Keep your bids going for your stuff in session one. This is the time to win. Don't back now. You need a winner's attitude. Uh, <laughs> You're getting me kind of fired up. We need yeah, like a montage. We need like a bid, Rocky montage. Bid, bid. Bid. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to talk about where th what things are doing in extended bidding. And, uh, you know, we talked about how Heritage has 40 different departments. We have an amazing website. We have uh, our website gets more visits per day than any auction, ha all auction house websites combined. Mm -hmm. Exposure. Yes. I, I say that to consent so, a lot of times. Uh, it's exposure. You want your items to be represented and in in have the most eyes see them. That's how you get it done. So, and every department at Heritage has an archive of every item we've ever sold in every department over Heritage's entire existence. It's got um, full color images, full description, sale, prices, and the date. It's a great resource. Uh, the best w website in the industry. Here's a little bit more about it. 
Hello, I'm Ed Beardsley, Vice President and Managing Director of Fine and Decorative Arts at Heritage Auctions. Heritage Auctions is proud to present a remarkable variety of fine and decorative arts on the second Thursday of every month. You'll find a large breadth of exceptional property to choose from at various price points. Everything from fine silver, furniture and decorative arts, to Asian art, American and European art, art glass, and a special section devoted to the gentleman collector with items containing automobilia, travel, exploration. There's something for everyone within these auctions. Growing your collection is now even easier with Heritage's web tools, including my want list and my recommendations. Visit ha.com slash fine art to view the full auction schedule and to start searching. You never know what gems you may find. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Sadler and welcome to the Heritage Auction Search Tutorial, getting the most out of guided navigation. This tutorial will give you an understanding of how to navigate the ha.com website when searching for specific items. Let's get started. The best way to get started is by simply typing in a keyword on the Heritage homepage. Today we'll be looking for items from Muhammad Ali, including within all categories, all auctions, and buy now, and with the keywords featured in titles and descriptions. Let's hit the search button. I want to limit my search today to sports. I can further refine my search in sports categories to just baseball or boxing. I'm interested in boxing. This particular lot will be available in an upcoming Heritage Platinum Night Sports Collectibles auction. Another great feature of the Heritage website is the ability to do research by looking at items that have already sold. The same refined search features apply to our archives as well as our current items. In this case, let's look for a budget of say $101 to $1,000. What I'm really interested in is to see the highest price ever paid for a Muhammad Ali lot sold by Heritage Auctions. I can again access the filters and delete the parameters I had for the previous price range. And now I click on the Sort Results tab. This is a great feature that allows you to sort items from highest to lowest price when items were sold, even alphabetically. Today we're looking for the highest price first. We can see that there are several items and the page nicely lays out the items making each of them easy to view. Another great feature of the Heritage website is the ability to change the view. In addition to gallery mode, you also can change it to a list. If any of these items don't interest you, you can go back and create a want list with the keywords Muhammad Ali. You'll be notified anytime an Ali item comes up for sale. Now I want to start over and shift gears completely. I'm going to head up to the Start Over tab and click it. Today I'm looking for items that deal with Superman. Here's something eye-opening, an Andy Warhol Superman painting sold for nearly $150,000. If Superman isn't your thing, you can use the Start Over button and begin a new search for items that do interest you. With this tutorial and a little practice, you'll be breezing through HA.com and our over 40 different categories. Happy hunting! Now you know how to search our website. Oh, I, I, I always wondered how my, that works. Mike, how do I find stuff? I always wondered how that works. So we are You're such a teacher. in the midst of extended bidding right now and uh, a lot going on. Tony, what do you see on the big board? Over there? Let me check the big, the big bid board. Let's see here. Um, Kobe Bryant, yeah, 29,000. Back to Kobe Chrome. We just talked about somebody just sport. hit it again. 29,000. El Cinder, 39,000 for that 8.5. Bidding battle for that one. Um, A lot of activity right now, which is what usually happens right at the beginning. There's our gold Jeter, 1,300. <laughs> so extended bidding for session one is going on right now. Session two is tomorrow. More great material. Look through there. You're going to find what you like. You've got all night to bid on that. Same deal. Extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. central time for that uh, and as we mentioned earlier a lot going on at heritage the platinum auction is launching tomorrow uh, it's the premier event in the hobby every year if it gets written 
Yeah, if you'd finish up those last <laughs> few laps, Tony, that w- I would appreciate just kidding. it. Um, <clears throat> just throw some of your usual word salad in there, if you know what I mean, <laughs> and uh, get it out there. Let the items speak for themselves. But... The most important auction in the hobby every year, cards and memorabilia, the most iconic items you can imagine, and we have some unparalleled material in there this time, proofing the auction, going through it many times over. Every time I'm just gasping as I turn the video. <gasps> We've got yeah. that. Yeah, got yeah. That. It, it, you make such a good point on that, because when I first saw the proof, and you see 100,000 estimate, you know, 150,000 estimate, and you just see so Million many of them. Estimate. Yeah, Million you dollar see. Dollar estimate. Yeah, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. When you write it or when you take it in, you know, you see it here and there. But when you see it all together in that in that one catalog, it really uh, it really makes you think. It does. You know, it really does. Just the quality of stuff we get here. So that's going to launch tomorrow, and the catalogs will be coming out to you in about a week. If you'd like a catalog, please let us know. We've got the David Hall T206 collection open right now for bidding as well. Uh, some real rarities with backs there. Also, some of the original tobacco pouches and tens wow. that the T206 cards came in are in that collection. Very cool part of it. Um, we've got the Partner One collection, a single consigner auction that celebrates the full extent of baseball cards, everything from 1875 to 2001, and some of the finest examples in there. And we're still taking consignments for our Michael Jordan and Basketball Icons auction. Uh, One-time opportunity. Uh, The basketball market is very high, so we're giving consigners This is the best Jordan stuff I have ever seen, and people are going to be shocked when we announce... (gasps) I'm gasping. No, people are going to be shocked when we announce... I mean, there's stuff coming in that I just heard about today that uh, um, just some phenomenal stuff that, that So we have a few more out. weeks, couple, two more weeks that we're taking consignments for that. Mm-hmm. So if you have basketball material, you want to take advantage of how hot the market is. This is going to be a basketball-only auction uh, centered around Jordan and the Jordan-era Bulls. But anyone basketball, uh, there's some incredible material. You know, we're taking things. We've got Lou Alcindor material in there, Dr. J material. Uh, and then, of course, Kobe, LeBron, Kevin Durant, all the modern guys, too. So if you're looking for a chance to take your basketball collectibles and have them presented as only Heritage can in a one-shot basketball auction uh, that's going to be fr- foremost and in the front for all collectors, please reach out to us. And we're still taking consignments for that uh, November auction. That's coming up in not too soon. Tony, have you got started writing that I'm going to start that after the Jordan. I'm going to make sure you get yes. that Yes, so next week's Stay Jordan, after that, get a couple hundred done. Get them <laughs> under our belt. <laughs> extended bidding still going. Tony, what, what's the story right now on extended bidding? What oh, do you see up there? Let's take a look here. 21,000 on 69. PSA 8 out center. Oh, there that. that 21,000. 2018 uh, Patrick Mahomes Contenders Optics at 13,000 right now. Ooh, Tracy McGrady making an appearance here. I like that Underrated. One. EX Century Essential Credentials, Tracy McGrady. That's a cool card. Uh, ooh, the 69 Tops Lou Alcindor at an, in a uh, 8 just got hit. That's a 21,000 21, right That's now. Unbelievable. Um, so basketball doing very great. A great opportunity. Cards and memorabilia are going to be in that auction. We'd love to present your material. Please reach out to us. You can get in touch with Tony at... Tony G at HA.com. I'm Mike P at HA.com. And uh, you can give us a call at any time. We'd love to talk to you. Thank you to everyone who watched tonight. We love having a chance to reach out to you guys, especially in this time. Tony, I wish I could reach out to you, but uh, I miss you, Tony. (laughs) Maybe next time. Maybe next time. So a huge thank you to uh, everyone who made this popular first. A huge thank you to our operations department, the best in the business. They do a well they, of a job. We sell over 30,000 items a year. We do over 70 million in sales. It's an enormous job for them to process, handle, image, and get all those items authenticated and everywhere they need to go. It's an impossible job, and they do it better than anyone else. Uh, your material is in the best of hands. And it is a select group of true professionals who They does keep it. me on the straight and narrow, which is not a pretty tough to thing to do. Yeah. And thank you to the team of a hundred that's right behind the camera making all this happen. 
uh, more than you know goes into it to do it. And we thank you to all of them who spend their time and effort to make us look good, which is not easy either. <laughs> um, so thank you to our fans out there who are watching. We really appreciate appreciate it. Um, and everyone who's commented, we're still going to keep talking to you. Uh, Tony and I will be back tomorrow on Instagram Live at 2.30 Central Time. I'll be in at 9.30 tomorrow morning, folks. So if, gonna, if you want to call me and talk collectibles, I'll be here. We're going to talk about... Uh, um, we're going to talk about some of the results from tonight, tomorrow on our Instagram live show, which we do every win Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2.30 Central Time. And uh, another great opportunity to interact with you. You can find that on our Instagram page, and we love to talk to you on all of our social media. You can find us there at AJ Sports. And uh, Tony, who you want to give a shout out to there? Oh, my goodness. Just, uh, you know, the wonderful guy who did, who did our uh, filming tonight did a heck of a job. Um, and uh, just uh, thank you. Thank you for, you know, getting all the items, describing everything. It's good to have you back. It's good to have us all I know. back here good together. To in here. We'll be back doing it tomorrow. And one last comment from, uh, oh, our most attractive fan who says, looking very traditional in the gray suit, red tie combo. So uh, <laughs> thank you to that lovely and talented person who commented that. And uh, hope to see you soon. And all of you out there who are watching us, we hope to talk to you soon. Have a great night and good luck in the auction.